two, one. Okay, looks like we are live. We got the green light. We got the microphone going. Hopefully, it's not too loud. I think we're okay. We're still in yellow zone there. That's fine. Okay, everybody, welcome. It is the Naked and Famous Denim, Naked and Famous Denim Day. Naked yes. and Famous Denim Day. Friday evening for many of you. Cheers. Saturday morning for many of us. Cheers. Good morning to us. We are streaming live from Yokohama, Japan. We've got our vintage milk glass stackable mugs here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you guys. Got yours too. They're, they were released today. It's good to be here with everybody. It's the uh, the start of the weekend for us, yes. and the end of the week for many of you. Uh, and this is how we wind down. We like to hang out with all you guys, talk about jeans, talk about some random stuff. Probably go on some rants. Uh, somebody uh, throw me a hot topic. I'll I'll rant on it. <laughs> Anyways, let's check in with the chat. Let's see who is here today. We've got Feronis. Feronis, Daddy Bezat. I'm nobody's daddy, but uh, thanks for joining us here. Well, Be you're daddy to our cats. I'm daddy. I'm a cat daddy. That's true. That's true. BD, hello. Er uh, saying hello early. Have to come back and tune in a bit later. Pants, like, and subscribe. Like and subscribe right now. <laughs> thanks, BD. Whether you're here right now or not, I appreciate I appreciate it. Yes. Always a good reminder. Everybody, before we get into it, definitely hit that like button. Um... Uh, Ferron is four days into a new pair of red core super guys. Nice. Red very, core. Yeah, very, very good. You know, yesterday on Instagram, I shared, well, yesterday, last night, so probably still today for many of you, uh, I shared a great post. Um, I'll, I'll, you know what? Let's just get right into it because this is a really nice post I found on Instagram of, uh, hold on, I gotta find it. It's in one of my stories of uh, a really nice pair of uh the uh the rainbow core boom rose city indigo is wearing them they look fantastic check that out great salvage id and then boom nice fading on there as well so uh if you guys have some great fades that you want to share with us just tag us tag us on uh on instagram naked and famous denim and uh, i'll be sure to share that with the community i love sharing your faded images and of course a lot of people out there are looking to see your faded jeans too. They wanna to know what they're gonna look like. So uh, you can always share that with us. I look through practically everything. I try to at least. If you if you do it in a post, and then I'll definitely see it. Mm -hmm. But stories, sometimes they last only like a day. Yeah. I think that's how long they last. Yeah. And you know, by the time I get to the notifications, they're already gone, so sometimes I miss it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I try to look at everything, and I certainly read all of the comments. Mm -hmm. um, I may not respond to everything, I especially don't respond to Instagram ones, comments, as much as I do messages. Anyways, I try my best um, because I hate typing on the little uh, screen yeah. there. Yeah, really yeah. don't like it. And um, got a lot to deal with, yeah, really. Yeah, true. But, um, but yeah, I do, I do look at everything. So I appreciate all the comments and uh, I'm, I'm paying attention. Uh, okay, back to the chat. Johnny Crumhorn in the house. Phil Thomas, JC in the house. Uh, Chris Griffin, greetings from Central Virginia, USA. Welcome, welcome. Sebastian Trilogy, yo, great to see you guys again. Great to see you again, too. Thanks for joining the chat. Uh, the Bruins Brothers, hello from NYC. Welcome, welcome. And Miss Ian's DC is in the house. Uh, Vince Chan writes, secured three mugs. Super stoked. Good on you. The uh, This one. The Jade um, one's real. Last yeah. I don't think it'll last the weekend. Longer. We have... Yeah. Yeah, we didn't. So the the this one was we produced the most of. Yeah, yeah. So because we we thought that this was the most yeah. iconic. I mean, but this one, I think it just it came green. out really yeah. nice, and it's uh yeah, it's very different. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this one's um more popular. It yeah. Seems, so if you want them, get them now. We'll we we we'll will them restock again, but, them again. So but it uh, might take a while. Yeah. I think uh, the you know, lead times are is, long. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, get them if you can, or I mean, if look, you don't have to feel obligated to get all three now. You could you could certainly get them as uh, as we go. But uh, but yeah, uh, if, if you got one, enjoy them. We're enjoying ours, and I'm really glad to have these out again. Yeah, you know, uh, I think throughout, if you've been with the live stream long enough, you know what? I'm gonna turn the 
volume on this uh, down just a touch because I think I'm getting too loud. There we go. That might be better audio. Sorry if it was too loud. Um, you know, in all these live streams, we're showing off all of our mugs and just our appreciation of these kinds of mugs. And we talked about how, oh, we used to make these mugs and I wish we could make them again. And well, now we've made them again. And now they're, they're available for everybody to enjoy. And hopefully I've turned some of you on to milk glass, milk glass. culture. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that said, if you ever find some cool vintage ones out in the world, just, just send me a message. Just say, hey, you know what, baby, would you like this? I'll pay for it. Yeah. But yeah. You don't, guys don't out in North America land. Don't find something that is like really overpriced yeah. though yeah. because that seems to be a problem. Yeah. Like just, you know, nicely. Yeah. After like five, ten bucks, twenty yeah. bucks, send me Dep a little message. Depends on the yeah. thing, but yeah. I, w I want it. And maybe you don't want it, but I definitely want it. But if you want it, you go get it too. Right? Oh, 100%. But if you find something really cool and you, you, you learned about it because of me, just just be like, hey, Bayzad. I found this. I found this. I was wondering if you like it. Yeah. I've, yeah, well, like, the, I love the vintage ones, but, like, these ones are cool because it's big. Yeah, like big you can cups. put more coffee in here. Yeah, the vintage yeah. ones are, like, all kind of smaller. Yeah. Which is fine. I mean, I shouldn't really drink a, more than... Well, I drink a lot of coffee, so but, uh, yeah. I do appreciate a bigger cup, that's for sure. This is good. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, uh, Phil Thomas, I got the Jadeite mug, good man. Rice W5, hello from Birmingham, UK. Welcome, welcome. Um, Chris Griffin writes, a month and a half into the blue grass weird guys. Uh, a week, <coughs> a few Sorry. weeks into the left hand tool groovy guy, been alternating from work and home. Chris Griffin, great choices there. Left hand tool groovy guy. I've got my natural indigo groovy guys. I, I don't, I'm not wearing them right now, mm -hmm. but I can recently fit back into them. So I'm hoping to enjoy them more and more in the summertime. Yeah, it's a cool summer jean. Yeah, too. I think it's a really cool summer jean. A lot yeah. of air comes up. Yeah, I had a good like summer outfit last year. I had my braids down, I had like a Mickey Mouse T-shirt. I felt felt really cool in them. Uh, <laughs> cool real, retro. Real, yeah, real vintage style. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, I hope you're enjoying those jeans very much. Um, Peter Madison writes, "Hello, everyone from uh, Elkland, PA, North." Central. Welcome, welcome, Peter. Or, sorry, Parker, Parker. Lars Johnson, hello from Stockholm, Sweden. Hello. Welcome, Lars. Uh, and Michael Udall from Arizona. Uh, everybody, it's so glad, it's so, so awesome to have everybody from all around the world. Lee H., hello from Sydney, wearing ultralight tech jacket for the Red Line Rally. That'll be an interesting fader. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. And that, you know what, Lee, tell us your experience with that jacket. I think that that's one of the, I think, um... It was a really good jean, the Ultralight Salvage. I liked how yeah. different it was yeah. from everything else. But I have to say it wasn't as well received as mm -hmm. I would hoped mm -hmm. it would be. I think maybe because it's very different from mm. traditional denim. Yeah. Um, I think also, like, it, the sizing was a little difficult because you, you uh, can't they don't you really... They don't stretch a lot. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't stretch a lot and you don't really want it skin tight, that kind of yeah. like very thin material. Yeah, also, for so. those people who don't know, um, let's pull it up on Tate and Yoko. Yeah, go. if you're buying it now, just uh, maybe uh, choose a size that would be larger than your um, what you choose normally. Yeah, they are on sale so we have them on a bit of a discount right now we have them available in the men's and ladies but yeah do consider when you're getting them have a little bit of extra room in the waist or where or where you know or wherever you're gonna need it um just because there's not a lot of flex with this fabric um but uh boy are they lightweight and comfortable 5.5 ounces that's not technically the lightest weight denim that we've ever made. We've we've technically done a jean, not technically, we, we did do a jean called the featherweight, and there was a five ounce selvage. It was more like a shirting weight denim, mm -hmm. and uh, it hey, they were light, they were comfortable, um, but I think durability wise, mm -hmm. the Ultratech really just blows it away. Right. You, you can you can do anything in those jeans, and they're gonna hold up pretty well. Yeah, um, and it's like the crispiness too. Like you know, um, we, we were able to like stand the jacket yeah, up yeah. and stuff like that because it's so crunchy. It's like a very like densely woven fabric. Yeah. So uh, if you're looking for a great summer jean, 
give yeah. that give that one uh, a consideration. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, available available now. Um, Sergeant Snuggle writes. Keeping warm here in Seattle with the Wonder Looper 701 GSM double weight hoodie. Nice. Good man. Good man. Enjoy it. Uh, I think that's a good weight sweatshirt for like Seattle winter, I think. Mm-hmm. It doesn't get yeah. particularly cold out there. Uh, you tell me. I mean, it depends on how, how climatized you are, I suppose. <laughs> but uh, that'll certainly keep you nice and uh, cozy in the, the mild winter. Mm. The mild winter. Um, okay. What's happening, guys? So excited for the hard and soft uh, C dot is checking in from Sheffield, UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, what's happening is the live stream right now, and that, that's the other thing that came out today: the hard and soft selvage. So we just did a video on that one. Uh, you know, I'm I'm just using our little uh, browser window thing a lot today, so let's check it out. So we got the hard and soft selvage. This came out today for those people who don't know. Uh, this is our latest release from the spring summer 2023 collection. It's a amazing blend of short staple uh, fiber cottons on the warp and um, long staple ELS, extra long staple fiber cotton on the weft. So very, very rough and kind of scratchy on the outside and smooth and comfortable on the inside. If you haven't seen the video that we put up for this, it's uh, it's online now, so you can check it out on the YouTube channel, which you're, you're probably already subscribed to because you guys are the best. Um, great fitting jean, great wearing jean. When we were doing the video for this, I just didn't want to take them off. Mm -hmm. Like I put them on and I just wore them all day. They're so nice to wear. And the texture was really, you know, just that I haven't worn an indigo jean in a while. You know, Mm -hmm. last year for the indigo invitational, I wore the solid black selvage. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing the uh, raw cotton slub this year for the indigo invitational. And so it's been... Those have been my main drivers for a while, but getting into like a clean pair of dark indigo jeans Mm -hmm. got that great rough texture, and it was just a pleasure to wear. I also wore them slightly bigger on the waist. Mm. I I, I needed, like, I if I really forced them, I probably could have pulled them off without a belt on. But you know, just having that belt have that little extra, you know, tightness around the waist that I needed, but still enough room that they were comfortable right off the bat. Anyways, joy to wear. If you get them, I hope you enjoy them. And um, one thing that we did in that last video uh, that I really liked was that we showed off the difference between um, like short slub, mm. sh- short staple cotton, right hand twill versus left hand twill mm-hmm, fading. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, if you, you can ha- see that like it's like you know it's a, it's a very different type of fading. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully it showed up well. Um, if you if you saw the video, if you haven't seen the video, go and check it out and. Uh, You'll see that. Hopefully, we can incorporate more bits and bobs of knowledge like that in in these videos. Yeah. Yeah. I well, will, I, maybe it. Hmm. My problem is I want to do a lot of standalone videos. Right. But, but then we just I never just don't get have, around. I just to don't it. have the time yeah. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I can make one video a week, I'm very happy. You know, one video. Like I still have all my other things yeah, yeah, to yeah. do. So it, it's also that like with releases we can't procrastinate because the release day is coming yeah. up whereas like with topic like that we want to talk about you know that doesn't really have a release tied to it yeah it's difficult yeah uh yeah if we had a a, a video team it would be a whole another story mm-hmm. but uh yeah anyways maybe uh, as much as i wish i can get those as individual videos some of those that information is going to be packed into product videos Yes. And uh, anyways, if you watch them, you'll you'll catch yeah. little bits of knowledge here and there. And these live streams. And, and of course, yeah, these live streams. Um, okay. Uh, Marcus Tan writes, eagerly waiting for feedback on how the MIJ-10s are fading. I've been wearing mine every day since I got them about a week ago and still just trying to put them through their paces. Well, follow Wizard of 32 Ounce right. on Instagram. That's uh, our man Garrett there at Tatian Yoko. He's been wearing his since December. He's putting some good fades into those right now. So mm-hmm. he periodically updates yeah. uh, with some photos. So you definitely want to see that. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll try to put some on the main Tatian. I'm oh, sorry, on the main Naked and Famous Instagram. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll ask Garrett to take some 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 nice photos. Mm-hmm. Um, Lee H. writes about the ultralight tech denim. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ultralight tech fabric is actually pretty great for semi-formal office environments. Uh, oh, yeah. 
all tonal stitching and buttons can be worn with dress shirts and mm -hmm. trousers. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. that's so true. Tonal makes it look, you know, more clean, yeah. less casual. But also that fabric, that typewriter fabric, it doesn't have the the, you know, the grains showing through. Yeah. For some reason, like the dark tonal, definitely. Yeah. It's, it can pass by not being a jean. Yeah. Speaking of tonal, more tonal. There's I'm, I'm doing a lot of uh, transition shots today. <laughs> Um, we just released with Blue Owl Workshop their 10th anniversary edition. Uh, well, it's a kind of a re-release of the Left Hand Twill Midnight Edition. So for those people who don't remember these or, you know, this may be your first time seeing it. Um, this is our classic Left Hand Twill denim, 13.75 ounce Left Hand Twill. You know, we've done the offshoot. We've done, uh, you know, and... and, and We've done the uh, the offshoot left end twill, the the that was the broken twill edition. Right. Um, have we done a different another left end twill edition? Mm, no, I don't think so. I think this is the only Th this one. is the only yeah. other one, right? So this is the other uh, uh, left end twill iteration. So that same classic warp tonal stitching, uh, you know, blacked out hardware, indigo warp, indigo weft, and a very sorry indigo warp black, black weft. weft. So a very, very beautiful fading denim here. You've got a lot of contrast once that indigo warp starts to fade through. Yeah. And uh, these are available exclusively at Blue Owl Workshop. And uh, you can get them today. They've got a, they bought them in, in the Super Guy, the Weird Guy, and the Easy Guy options. So you've got, uh, you've mm -hmm. got choices here. And of course, they've got a, a, a great selection of naked and famous denim jeans as well. They got the hard and soft. They also have their exclusive side winder selvage. So uh, yeah, check out Blue Owl if you haven't done so already. Uh, ten years. Ten years. That's great. Ten years. It's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a very great partnership that, that we've had with them for, for a long time. I haven't been to Seattle in a while. Mm -hmm. um, that pesky COVID got in the way. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'd am i really like to get out to Seattle again. I used to go there twice a year mm. for a while. Um, so sometimes I'd, I'd pop into the shop and, and see people there. But uh, I, I really miss the Blue, Blue Owl crew and, uh, and Jay. Shout outs to, shout outs to them. Um, uh, Electric Bamboo writes, Blue Owl is one of my favorite re retailers to order from. Absolutely. You know, they, they say Jay is the man mm -hmm. for a reason. Because Jay is indeed the man. Yeah, they're um, a real pro. Yeah. Their pictures are amazing. Yeah. Their information is always yeah. great. Definitely one of the most important denim shops in the entire world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no question about it. Um, Blue Owl, they, they are, they know what's up. That's for sure. Um, Parker Madison writes, when I get naked and famous, I normally get it from Blue Owl. Well, there you go. There's, there's a reason. There's a reason everybody loves Blue Owl. Um, okay. Uh, does Blue Owl hem, Francisco Michael writes. They do hem. The only thing they tend not to hem are super heavyweight mm. fabrics. And the reason, and this is a legitimate reason, is because they don't want to screw up their machine. Right. Right? Um, they, uh, you know... Having a 20, 21 ounce denim can be risky, and those machines, the union specials that we have, when they break down, there's not a lot of options for repair for those guys. Mm -hmm. um, you know, parts are hard to come by, and especially if you know, you know, Jay's got one. That machine goes down, he can't hem anything else. Mm -hmm. So better not to risk it. At Tatsu and Yoko, and you know, our factories, we have many, mm -hmm. right? So if one goes down, we have more than one. So it's really not too much of a worry there. Uh, we don't run into too many issues ourselves, but um, you know, we we we're not banking on just having that one machine operating. Obviously, we're a, we're a factory environment, so we have more than one of everything. But uh, but yeah, so that that's the reason. But anyhow, um, they do do hemming. Uh, you can request it online, or or they'll do it right there on the spot in the store. Um, okay, Olorg writes, Risa, is that the oatmeal hoodie? Yes, it is. Yeah. It matches really nicely with the cream of this shirt. Yeah. Just, this uh, is the, the silk blend, if I'm not mistaken. Is it? I'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure this is, is silk, silk blend. silk blend yeah. from spring. 23. 23. Yeah, this one's not out yet. No. Not, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. So watch out for that one. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh... Rolando 
Ramirez writes, Hey, Bayzad, are the milk glass mugs solely your creation? Um, they're not my creation. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, we did find um, the company. Risa and I found the company that makes these here in Japan. And we were at a vintage shop in Osaka mm -hmm. where we discovered... Because, you know, we were out actually looking for, you know, milk glasses and, and right. you know, vintage, vintage mugs stuff. and things like that. And the shop that specialized in having all these old, you know, vintage cups and things like that that we like, they had uh, cups that mm -hmm. I'd never seen the shape of before. And we looked it up, and this is a, a newer company in Japan that was making these glasses with the, you know, traditional methods. And so we reached out to them, and they were... Uh, they were happy to make some mugs uh, with us for yeah. us. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, re, uh, you know, we, maybe we could do it in this live stream. Anyway, we could. We have a lot of vintage mugs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. um, not like you know, five hundred, but you know. Mm -hmm. You want to show off some? Of we them? we can show off some mm. some of our favorite ones. All right. Um, I'll bring a couple. Bring bring a couple. Um, so, you know, we 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 try to pick up. Uh, these cups whenever we can. In fact, we have a ridiculous amount of cups just in general. Um, so I, I, I don't know what it is about them. Um, maybe I, I just like that the, the kitschiness of them, I suppose. Um, and of course, there is an old world quality to them. You know, maybe when they were in existence, people kind of, you know, took them for granted as kind of a cheap mug. But through, like, over the years, you start to realize that these, you know, cheap mugs actually were some of the best quality mugs you could find. You know, there's nobody, you know, you, you go to the, you know, maybe the dollar store and you buy some mugs there today. Like, nobody's going to remember or have any, like, you know, particular feelings about those mugs. But, and they, they, they just don't have the weight and the feel of something tangible. But when you pick up one of these vintage mugs or one of these you really really feel the weight of them uh it's it's not it's it's definitely noticeable so um yeah i uh, and i also like seeing old graphics and mm -hmm. stuff that i just don't see too much anymore Actually, yeah we've got one more but yeah we've got we've got a, we've got quite a lot anyways yeah. this this one you've probably seen many many times my uh, my my old school Dunkin' Donuts one. This is before the orange, you know, logo. Mm -hmm. um, so this one, maybe late '70s, I'm thinking. Uh, this one came around, so uh, I really like this one. If if I if I could find one with the uh, the more orangey logo, I would be really happy. Um, this one was a gift from uh, from a viewer uh, a couple years ago. Uh, this Snoopy one, I really like Snoopy. Um, and there's actually an entire series of Snoopy ones. This one appears to be from 1965 um, and uh, 1958 to 1965. So I would imagine that's what the, that's when these were are made. Um, I'm not worth a thing before coffee break. There you go. So I, I enjoy this one. And this one's a taller one than a typical uh, typical uh, stacking Fire King mug. Um, oh, this is a Canada series. Yeah, this is the Canada series. This one is from 1980, from Canada's Wonderland. If you are from the Toronto, Ontario region, then you know what Canada's Wonderland is. It, it's uh, it's our amusement park, and this one's got uh, Boo Boo there from uh, from Yogi Bear series. So I uh, got a great uh, Boo 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 mug. This is the cup that I probably use the most. It's kind of my favorite. It's. Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, it must Nova have been a Scotia, restaurant. Canada's Ocean Playground. Yeah. Mr. Red. I wonder if that was a mascot for the city or yeah, maybe a restaurant. I, I, yeah. yeah. I thought it was for the city of Nova Scotia, but is it a city? Is Nova Scotia a city? Nova Scotia know. is the is province. It a province. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, uh, it's great. I love yeah. lobsters. Let me look up Mr. Red. Yeah. Canada's Ocean Playground. Anyways, I just like the face of this uh, of this little lobster yeah. man. Vintage Nova Scotia plate, Mr. Red. Um, interesting. 
I guess uh, it's there like were, a yeah character, fluid. some kind of character. It's not very iconic. It no, look like. I don't think anyone uh, knows about remembers them. that one. Um, and then we've got uh, this guy right here, the McDonald's cup. It's the Canada yeah. version. Yeah. We have the um, the American, American version, version too. has the, a little black dot on the bottom. Like yeah. uh, I'll get that one just okay. to show the difference. Yeah, I just like how that it's different. You know, you gotta have the maple leaf to show up. But yeah, American one I, I, uh, also says like "Good morning" or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I just got, we got a lot. Mm. This is not even half of them. But uh, anyways, we, maybe on another different live stream, we'll go through all of them. I know, I this is, want to do. Yeah, this is the American edition of that mug. Um, this is the more common one. The Canadian one is obviously a little bit more uh, scarce. But uh, if, you're, if you're in America, you should, if you go to a flea market, odds are you can it's find this abundant. one. This one's pretty I've common. I've seen them a lot. Yeah. I've seen... Both of these in Japan, too, so yeah. it's like, you know, it's yeah, not you, that hard. Right. Um, I like, there's also this series of, mm. like, gradient ones, and, uh, yeah, these ones, I guess, I don't know how they put the coating on, but... Yeah, uh, I think it's maybe yeah. the same way yeah. that the print is done. Mm. But you can see it is it is a white cup with a coating on top, and I, I just like that gradient tone, and that... <laughs> this vintage brown, you know, you don't see a lot of yeah. products in this color anymore. So I have a couple of different colors of gradient cups, but uh, I do enjoy the gradient series. It's funny because yeah. it does like it. This, these ones look plastic. Right, they do look. And a then you plastic hold it, and it's like, wait, it's yeah, not. That's plastic. not plastic at all. Uh, and then uh, this one here, there's like a nature series one, and this was got a, a roughed grouse. There is one that I don't have that I really want to have that has a Canada goose on it. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I guess I like having the, the I Canadian. This was Canada no, 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 no. <laughs> roughed grouse. Oh, but there okay. is another one um, in this series that I don't own, um, which is actually, I think, kind of common. I'm sure I'll come across it at some point um, that says Canada goose and it has, it has a different bird on there. So, um, yeah. yeah uh, this is another one of the Jed. Jedi. A jadeite one. This is an original jadeite yeah. one. This one's yeah. like really thick yeah. and round. I yeah. like that. And lastly, yeah, yeah, this, today, yeah. I actually really like these milk glasses too. Yeah, teacup with the yeah. pearl kind of finish. This finish. It's so like old school and yeah. like, I don't know, it's very yeah. um, kitschy. I yeah. found this at my grandparents' uh, place. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you gotta have it. You might find some at your grandparents' place, especially oh, in, 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 in America. In America, America yeah. yeah. Um, now, oh, North America, yeah. we had a question here about... Um, da, 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 da. Lee H., do the mugs get stained easily from coffee or tea? Well, they do and they don't. So, while they're, I would say that they mostly don't. Like, this cup, as you can see, is perfectly clean and it's a this has got to be from the 70s um and i mean for the most part all the cups that we have as old as they are are like as new condition as you know they can be that was just dark because of the paint but i do have ones that are a little bit stained like this one's perfectly good as you can see um this one's got some kind of stains in it but it, it, you know, just... I think this one also, like, feels different, you know, maybe the, um, maybe like the, the, texture the finish is was different, different or yeah. something like that. And obviously, like, if you leave your coffee, like, to evaporate and dry yeah. for, like, days, it's yeah. not good. <laughs> right. But yeah. if you just, like, you this, know... This one's pretty good. I mean, it's got a little bit of, like, yeah. but not so bad. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I guess. But if you just like drink your coffee and, you know, a couple hours later, just, you know, rinse it with water or something, like it's not going to stain. Yeah. Like, yeah. But yeah, I, I would, yeah, that, I mean, I guess that's just normal like, yeah, uh, advice. Any other. Uh, so, milk glasses, they can be very, very fun to collect um, if you like this kind of stuff. It does start taking up a lot of room. Uh, so, but when you have guests over, yeah. they can. Uh, they can have unlimited coffee yeah, unlimited in fresh coffee cups. In fresh cups, that's it. Just like a restaurant. Um, 
Kenny Ingram, melamine sponges, a dollar twenty-five at Dollarama. Basically, get any stains out of my kitchen items. That that is true. We we do have a stack of melamine sponges here. The only thing to be careful of with melamine sponges is that they are basically sandpaper. So uh, the graphics yeah, like this, do especially not the old kind. Apply it on the graphics. Yeah, it's um, gonna go. Yeah. So inside, if you need to get rid of some stains, but keep the melamine sponges off of the outside because, you know, something like. Even this Dunkin' Donuts mug, it might be hard to see, but, you know, a little bit of the finish here and there is, is coming off. I mean, this is a, this is from the 70s, so, yeah. I mean, it But you takes know toll, the but. kind of, like, ours are new ones, so it can stay, like, I'm not going to say that use melamine sponge on this, but, like, it can withstand a lot more. Yeah. But old ones, they're just... You know, like it over time, you're gonna be able to see the difference between yeah. the ones that you don't have to worry about and the ones yeah. you do have to worry about. Yeah. And the glaze on the outside yeah. has kind of worn away. Yeah. I've ruined mugs with beautiful finishes on them because I put them in the dishwasher, mm -hmm. and that was because whatever you know finishing they had on the cup had worn out eventually, and then mm -hmm. the dishwasher, whatever the detergent was used, was way too strong, yeah. and it washed off the entire graphic. Mm -hmm. um, so. Anyways, you don't have to worry about that with, with these ones. Yeah. But uh, if you want them to last 50 years, just, just take care of them. That's it. Because they will. They will last, they will last for a long time. Um, all right. Uh, Kenny Ingram, big fan of Pyrex mugs. I have a set of Old Town Blue along with the matching uh, Corel dishes. All right. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Pyrex, um, Chemet. Yeah. Well, yeah, like old vintage yeah. Chemex. Um, uh, 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 anyway, do you guys know what a Chemex is? I don't know. What they're just coffee makers. But uh, <laughs> uh, we like glassware. What can I say? We do. We do. Um, old glassware we like. It's also very iconic. You know, you see it on like movies and TVs and stuff like that. It's just a great design. Yeah. Like a, a Chemex, like, coffee carafe. Vintage ones are really heavy glass. Mm -hmm. um, if you find, like, you maybe, you might be able to find one of these in a thrift store here and there. But the old ones are really thick and heavy glass. And they're really nice. Uh, I would like to own one. Um, but, uh, yeah. Look out for these if you if you're ever if you're in a vintage, if you're in a thrift store, you might be able to find one. If you find a nice heavy one, you've got a you've got a really good one, that's for sure. Um, and then uh, just even like character cups, like you know, got the Immortal Hulk Hogan here, World Wrestling Federation. So anything with a graphic on it that is from the you know before the you know mid '80s, I'm uh, I'm a big fan of. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Um, so that's cups. That's cups, everybody. Um, Kenny Ingram, hey guys, joining the live stream first time in a while. I'm rocking my natural seed denim today in minus 20 Winnipeg and excited Ooh. for the spring. You got to be excited for the spring when you're dealing with minus 20. <laughs> we're almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. We're almost uh, at March. We're almost at March. It's the last week of February. Mm -hmm. So we're getting there. We're getting close. Cherry blossom season is coming here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. It's in the air. It is in the air. It, yeah. the, the plums are already bloomed um, yeah. fully. And so. all the cherry blossom related products are starting to hit the oh, store yeah, shelves. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. when you know. <laughs> yeah, that's when you know spring is coming in Japan. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. What do we got here? L was here writes, we need a Peanuts times Naked and Famous. We were just talking we were about, talking about that last yesterday. night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Random. Um, yeah. As much as we like peanuts, I just don't, like, I, I still haven't really found the yeah, right. I don't know what it would be. Yeah, because without the graphics, like, I don't know how to express yeah. the world of peanuts. Yeah, like, it would be, it would be a pocket flash or le like some you know snoopy on the leather patch but yeah, pocket i don't bag would yeah. be the yeah. <laughs> print of yeah. the uh cartoons right uh, not cartoons uh, yeah like the comic, like comic strips strip, yeah. um but i don't know what the denim would be yeah like, we were yeah, really it's... we were literally talking about this last night yeah so, um yeah uh 
Okay. Uh, Oak Odell, I got the mugs, B. Good man. Nice. Enjoy them. Um, BD writes, Andy Belanger shared a new flash or details of, or secret for now. Don't spill the beans too early. It's too early to spill the beans. Is it ever too early to spill the beans? That one's a little too early. But yeah, I'm glad you like it. Uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's an artwork in progress. Hmm. Um, but if you know us, then you know what then you know what that is. And by the way, uh, for those who don't know, Andy Belanger is our uh, one of the guys who does artwork for us. Uh, he does some pocket flashers and uh, leather patch designs. Uh, we have, a, you know, we, we work with a handful of artists, uh, and uh, he he's uh, he does a lot of great work for us. He's also a uh, a professional wrestler in Montreal. Mm, and, we went uh, and, to yeah, the, we went to one of his shows yeah. at the IWS Hardcore uh, in Montreal. Uh, so look him up on Instagram. Andy Belanger, uh, great comic book artist. Like, really, it's it's amazing how incredible a comic book artist he is, and also has time to do the wrestling and, and uh, the talent and the talent. Like, he's just, <laughs> it's just it's, it's all it's that. all there, and yeah. uh, it's it's incredible. I, like, I'm, I'm. Those are like yeah. two not related talents that he's good at. Like, yeah, like, at professional it, level. Yeah, it's really neat. Um, okay. Uh, Electric Bamboo writes, Woodstock is a featherweight denim with yellow stitching. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Invis Ian Snoopy, a version of a black and white weft, Woodstock, yellow denim. Well, that could be something. Ideas. Yeah, Snoopy, red baron denim. I would want Snoopy in space. Very, yeah, uh, very yeah. iconic. Very iconic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's it's it, it anyways definitely. It's there, but uh, we don't know if it'll ever come to fruition. Maybe one day, you never know. Um, okay, uh, David A writes. Any plans to bring back the King of Lords? I'm sad that there are no more denim jackets left online. Mm. No, but we are bringing the King of Slub two. That is going to be part of Fall Winter twenty three. Uh, it's the King of Slub denim. With a, uh, a like a beige weft. weft, and it'll be available in denim jacket as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is a new option in that super slubby heavyweight, not just super slubby, the ultimate slubby, slubbiest, yeah. slubbiest denim. Uh, supreme slubby, supreme slub, but not not a collaboration. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, uh, f- uh, Parker Madison Simpsons times naked and famous. That's yeah. pretty also, yeah. like, you know, I can see that. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, other brands, like, hmm. It's, yeah. When it's played out so much, like, well, I mean, I guess. I, like, yeah, there's a lot of Simpsons Dragon merch Balls. out there, but I just don't know, like, how, what am I doing to make this denim, like, really, I mean, I'm sure we could figure it out, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. The Simpsons is very, obviously, it's very big. I haven't watched The Simpsons in a long time. I was when I was a younger person, I I'd watched every episode a hundred times. Mm-hmm. Right? It, like every day after school it was on like three, four times a night. Like so I know all of early Simpsons, but I would say like from the Simpsons movie on till now, mm. I've caught a handful of episodes. Yeah. But to be fair, since like, you know, that era until now, I haven't watched a lot of T V in general. I just right. Like, I don't, our lives have yeah, changed. Like, yeah. it's not like you have TV and that's what you watch. Like, whatever they put on the air is what yeah. you watch. So, it's... Yeah. yeah. I uh, I cut the cable cable. Yeah, it's been over 10 years since I've had, like, TV cable. Right. And, yeah. I just... And especially in the last couple of years... I mean, we've been we, living yeah, in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> I just never really watched much tv so i don't know what's going on in the world uh, yeah that much. but yeah I, I, like it's amazing how much of like your like quotes come from uh simpsons you have all kinds of like things oh, yeah. that you say yeah. to to brandon or whatever and i have no idea what yeah. it is but it's just like oh it's yeah. it's the the percentage of it being from the simpsons mm. is very yeah. high yeah everything's coming up millhouse mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that's my reference to brandon just he somehow Brandon always finds a way 
He's like, a pretty lucky yeah, human being. He always finds a way. And, yeah. like, whether it's, like, you know, we're looking, like, it's the middle of nowhere and we need a taxi and, like, you know, there, yeah. there, somehow a taxi appears. Like, you know, we're, whatever the problem is, it just solves itself. It just solves itself and everything <laughs> always comes up Millhouse. Yeah. And, and I always I always tell that to Brandon. It's amazing. Um, but, yeah. Uh, Nicholas Vilfu writes, I've got a Simpsons varsity jacket from when my dad worked for them. That's pretty amazing. Uh, That's pretty amazing. I'd love, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see that jacket. Um, Nick Spark writes, Full Metal Alchemist times Naked and Famous would be nuts. Pokemon and, and Mega Flare Studios writes, Pokemon times Naked and Famous. Pokemon I would like. But then we'll have to make 100. We have to make 151 <laughs> different Jeez. denims. Uh, if... <laughs> Are they like also like creating new? Yeah, ones? yeah, no. There's like eight hundred of them. There's oh, like there's, right, a, there's yeah. a, I would do original. Uh-huh. Look, obviously, <laughs> obviously, this is never gonna happen. <laughs> to make literally a hundred and fifty-one different yeah, that's, fabrics. That's ridiculous. If we were a big enough company, and with a huge enough following that like every season we could put out like ten, and then eventually <laughs> get through it. Uh, but it's like it would be so fun. There it would, are Pokemons that nobody cares about. Yes, right? but you know what? The beauty of the Pokemon that nobody care about is that they get so little merch and love that the people who do love them <laughs> are like, finally, I have something for this. You know, uh-huh, I have uh-huh. some Clefairy like you know merch. Is Clefairy one that nobody cares about? I don't know. I'm just trying to Never think. Never heard of, of it. Yeah. So maybe. Uh, but yeah, there's 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 got to be some uh, like. Um, like Metapod merch, like no, like who's who's who? Somebody's like, man, I really need some Metapod stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, if we were to do Pokemon Magikarp jeans, I would do Magikarp jeans. Um, Magikarp turns into Gyarados, is like the big dragon. Uh, Magikarp is just a giant carp that does nothing, but then he evolves into a good into a good Pokemon. Um, but yeah. I, I would anyways if if we were to do it which I I think it will eventually happen. It it uh, is up our yeah, alley yeah, I feel. But yeah. you want to talk about collections guys. You want to see some Pokemon <laughs> stuff? Well, let me just pull out a few Jeez. you know. Sorry, it's Bay's Ed collection day. <laughs> I have no knowledge of Pokemon outside of the you know like I know Pikachu and I know can I even name another one? Uh, Jigglypuff. And stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I remember that Pokemon was, like, became really big a little bit after I kind of graduated from all kind of, you know, stuff like that, like anime and all that. And I remember that, some like, a bunch of kids got seizures from watching Pokemon episode. And it became a huge news. And ever since then, all kinds of, like, uh, children's, like, anime, like, programs started to, like, have humongous warning at the beginning saying, like, do not watch it close, like, you know, like, sit far away from your TV, you know, have your light on and blah, blah, blah. And and they stopped doing, like, you know, like, really, like... um, not good for your brain kind of uh, graphics. So that was fun. Uh, but yeah, that's as much as I know about Pokemon. Sorry, guys. Let's read some comments. Wow. Fun fact, Chris Gryphon writes, Fun fact, on your live stream, Dunkin' Donut Cup, I believe, first appeared July 23, 2021. All right. Yo, if you're gonna, are you going to be our uh, our official uh, historian? <laughs> that is yeah. insane. Okay. So, Bayzat was uh, like saying the other day that we we had like eighty something. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. YouTube uh, live streams. So this live stream, the title of it, um, I didn't put the date. I put the episode, episode eighty eight. So we've had. 88 live streams on YouTube, but we've actually had more live streams because right, back in the Instagram in live Instagram, days. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, anyways, I'm, I'm just numbering them now. Yeah. Uh, that's that's good. Yeah. Y- y- you know why? 
Because every now and then I forget, I put in the wrong date. Yeah, on the... yeah, yeah, yeah. So That's I'm just like, is. I should stop doing that. Yeah, but then uh, you're going to put different episodes. Yeah. Wrong episodes. So Pokemon, I have a lot of Pokemon stuff. Mostly games. I don't have a lot of like figurines and things like that. I, I don't really get into those. But uh, I mean, check that out, guys. It's a uh, original red. My box. The box is in pretty good condition, I have to say. And uh, I'd really just kept this thing mint ever since I owned it myself. But you uh, opened it, right? This is opened, mm. but I mean, the box itself has a v is just very well kept. Uh, it's not it's not a hundred percent mint or anything like that, but uh, I've I've really kept that thing in great condition. So I've got my my original red, I've got my original silver, and that thing is also just very 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 minty. You know, not not a scratch on that thing. That is a, a beautiful box. Yeah, very beautiful box, everybody. Um, and I've got, uh, you know, I, I have more, but uh, my fire red. Check that out. Again, very very good condition box. And my ruby. I have a sa I have a sapphire somewhere. I think I think it's in my mom's place still. But uh, I have fire red, and then. Uh, whatever blue and then ruby and sapphire i have i have them all and then i have all the 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 3ds ones the the ds ones and this is one that i have because uh and i've actually never played it but this only came out in the U this never came out in north america um learn typing with pokemon <laughs> so it's a typing game um which can actually sometimes be fun um, I don't know if you've ever played. There was a Sega Saturn game called Typing of the Dead, and yeah, it was. Yeah, I tried that a couple of times. Yeah, if you ever played, um, uh, uh, why am I for, Typing of the Dead is uh, House of the Dead, uh, mm -hmm. which was an arcade kind of shooting game. But instead of a gun, you had a keyboard, and you'd have to type in the word, and every time you hit the letter, it would like you know fire a shot. So you had to make sure you're sh shooting, uh, sorry, typing accurately. Um, but yeah. I'm just surprised that like this is like I guess you start you started with the uh, Game Boy yes. the Pokemon right yeah like this just super old school Poke uh, Game Boy kind of yeah it just feels so complicated for it to be coming from this uh, I guess so you know I mean th like the other day I saw uh, somebody like the entire original Super Mario Brothers game I think it was like less than a me it's like maybe 40 or 50 kilobytes like it's not a very big game in terms of memory mm -hmm. and someone's like the entire game like you know 50 kilobytes and like this screenshot three megabytes it's like a screenshot of the original mario brothers games now is more data than the actual game um yeah i've got my uh, my silver french manual pour uh, les canadiens and uh whoa and uh, what do we got here? Um, oh yeah, gold and silver little disc that came with my pre-order back in the day. What's in it? Contains movie clips, Ooh. movie music sampler, gold and silver screenshots, <laughs> Nintendo Power mm. Player's Guide offer, and Pokemon trivia. Screen the wallpaper. Yeah, and yeah. and screenshots because yeah. you know if you don't have the internet, how else are you gonna see this game? You gotta get you gotta get the sampler disc. Um, all right, so yeah, that's uh, that's some of my little collections. But yeah, one day I would really like to do Pokemon because I do have a uh, a tender spot in my heart for Pokemon. Um, okay, uh, Mike Knight writes, my girlfriend and I still play Pokemon Go every day. We just got back from the Las Vegas event. Very interesting. Pokemon Go is still very popular here in Japan. Especially yeah. in this neighborhood. Yeah. In our, for some reason. In our neighborhood, every day, there's just like groups of people with multiple phones, by the way. Yeah. Some, I've seen people with two, three phones at the same time and just going at it. And like, yeah. these are the people you don't expect to be. Like, I mean, obviously, they're all ones that you would expect uh, uh. to be playing Pokemon Go. But like, it's just some random business looking person yeah or like mom <laughs> like uh, it's it's kind of weird right uh it is a little weird but I, I never got into pokemon like when it first came out i was part of that little initial rush 
I、um, always remember when you say Pokemon Go. Like I remember you going to Seattle and with Blue Owl guys.、Yeah. Like you went out to Pokemon、yeah. Go, like、yeah. outings, and it's like, oh, I guess that's a good way to socialize. Yeah.、Um, I, and I remember when Google did that find Pokemon event, mm, 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 and like you had to go on Google Maps and find all the Pokemon. And I was really into it because it was only on for a few days. And it turned out that anybody who found all of them, Google sent them like business cards that said like Pokemon Master.、Oh, yeah, that would have been I thought cool. That was pretty cool. I never, I never got that. I never got that. Yeah. They,、um, do they still do like Google Maps? Do they still do something like? Fun like that. I, I remember there was one that the to find Waldo, and I was very good at.、It. Oh yeah, I remember that one.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was fun. I'm a Waldo master.、Um, okay. Um, uh, uh, Vance Edwards writes, "Dear Nick and Famous, please approach Keanu Reeves and <laughs> and try really really hard to get him as brand ambassador. <laughs> He seems to be the perfect candidate. Thanks. You know what? I think if I just put my hair down a little bit." I'll be like a bad knockoff of Keanu, and I don't. Think no, you、so. don't think so. I don't、right. think it looked like him.、Um, But I, yeah, I mean, I would love to try yeah, and reach yeah, Keanu yeah, Reeves. Yeah. Just、yes. personally, he's a he's a cool guy.、Um, <laughs> he seems to be the nicest celebrity in the world. Yeah.、Uh, Shout outs to Keanu Reeves if you want to、uh, if you want to say hello and. Yes, we'll give you some jeans or cups. We'll give you a cup. I'll give you a cup,、uh, <laughs> maybe Gene. I like your movies. It would be a personal gift. Yeah, well, it has to be the Matrix、yeah. jeans. Yeah, I give you. I'll give you a pair of Matrix jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't give celeb. We don't really give celebrity giveaways, but not for promotion. Yeah, just personal. Just a、gift. personal gift. Yeah. yeah. Get in touch with me. <laughs> if you're watching, this. <laughs> if you're watching, Keanu, if you're watching this right now, which good、It's、chance、possible. that you、I'm、are.、Okay. Um, We're fans, yeah. Just so you know, I am genuinely. <laughs> oh yeah, you're one of the biggest yeah, fans. Yeah.、Um, you've, yeah. you've liked him since.、Yeah. Uh, I've liked him for a long time. Yeah.、Uh, okay,、um, Chris Griffin, you have a Game Boy collection as well. I saw that video. Yeah.、Uh, LOL. July thirtieth, twenty twenty one. Chris Griffin, are you our new、uh, archivist? That's if, if that's a if that's like how, like I just want to know how he knows. How do you know this? Yes. How are you keeping? Is it、track? because you love Dunkin' Donuts or you love you know milk glass whatever, or is it because you, you have a perfect memory, like a photographic like、memory? like Rain Man? Yeah. Let's know. Let's know, Chris. I appreciate it. Lee H. Bazet has awesome collections of all things vintage. I got a lot of random collections. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay,、um, Kenny Ingram, are your margins the same、uh, regardless of whether we buy the jeans at Tatanyoko or another retailer?、Um, well, no. I mean, if you buy direct from us, our margins are a little bit、uh, stronger.、Uh, but for me, it doesn't matter if you buy from、uh, us directly or you buy from one of our retail partners. Yeah, I mean, it all supports us. We don't us. want you to buy, not buy from you know <laughs> retailer. Yeah, we wouldn't wholesale. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, it's, 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 it, it's a balance. Yeah, hundred percent.、Right? Without the retail partners, we wouldn't have the reach that we would. Yeah, and they put in a lot of work. Obviously,、um, and so I mean, we we would like to continue working. Would. Yeah, I I, I like the way that we work. We have、yeah. we have this dual relationship. But yeah, I mean, you know, the retail partners we make a little bit less money,、uh, you know, for a good reason. Yeah. yeah, they're doing all the legwork. They're carrying the stock. They're putting the money up, and and it, you know, they're buying the goods. They have the storefront, so of course they get to make a better share of that, you know, profit、uh, part. But also by us having our own stores, we can also profit a little bit more, which also helps us grow our own production and fund everything that we need、right. to fund. So、yeah. between everything, it all kind of sloshes together so that we can operate. Yeah, right. It's a great partnership. Yeah, we 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 need to have both、yeah. going.、Um, Uh, Kenny Ingram, I like to order from Tati and Yoko whenever possible, but sometimes another retailer will have a jean in my size that Tati doesn't. Yeah, and that's perfectly、Didn't、fine. That retailer,、yeah. it, it really doesn't matter. Look, whether you buy from us, you、You're、buy from a retail partner, even if you、okay. buy them used or on and on, 
look, just wear raw jeans and I'm happy. Um, that's really the bottom line for me. Yeah, we would uh, like more people to be wearing naked and famous. Yeah. And that can be achieved in many ways. Yes. So uh, we appreciate your support. No ma- even if you don't buy our jeans and you're just tuning into the live streams. That's great. That's great too. <laughs> like, it, however you, you know, consume our content or, you know, want to support us, w- I appreciate it no matter what. You know, I know our jeans aren't, uh, th- they're not something you can buy every day, you know. So <laughs> some people it is. For, for Keanu, maybe. Um, he can, but he yeah, really yeah, shouldn't. He, Keanu, if you're buying our jeans every day, stop it. Just wear them, you know. Mm-hmm. It's not like uh, rich guys in t-shirts, you know. Wear it, throw it away. <laughs> so, you know, how it works. You know, I remember watching like MTV Cribs and you know, the rappers and stuff. They'd be like, "Yeah, I got a Air- pair of Air Forces every day. I wear them once and <laughs> throw it away." I don't know if they throw them oh, away. No. I'm sure they're being a little whatever, oh. you know, for the screen. But uh, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I don't. I only wear new stuff, you know. Anyways. Uh, when you're that rich. Mm. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I lost my train of thought. Um, okay. Uh, Dazed and Confused, CH writes, Hey, Bayzad, I was looking at the Japan Heritage Kasuri and noticed that there's a three-inch jump between the 33-inch and 34-inch through 28 through 33 and all increased by an inch. Is this a typo or does this happen in production? It sounds like a typo. Is that in the waist? Wait, jump. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'll tell you this, that there are all, often variances between production lots, and sometimes a three-inch jump between 33 and 34, 28 through 33. I'm, I'm going to have to look at that measurement chart to really see what the issue is. But the fact that I haven't <coughs> seen any like mega returns on this issue, usually if we screw up on a size chart, um, we'll see returns. And I don't think that this is an issue. And and when we start to see returns, and the reason is because the size chart is off, we'll remeasure the size chart. Okay, well, we'll get, we'll, we'll reevaluate this. It does Looks a little weird. But it, it, it could have been a production thing. Anyhow. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you if you're looking at that gene, uh, you can send us an email and we will uh, we'll look into that and get you clarification there. Um, okay. Uh, uh, Feronis writes, "I want to prevent fading. Will washing with vinegar work? No. No. Um, that doesn't do anything to stop the indigo from bleeding. If you want to prevent fading, uh, here's." the easiest way to do that. Number one, wear your jeans less. Uh, If you're wearing your jeans every day, you're putting constant wear on them and they're gonna fade more. So uh, an easy way to get around that, if you like, there's a particular fabric fabric you enjoy, maybe it's like a left-hand twill, get a second pair. So you've got two pairs, rotate them, you're putting less wear on each pair, they're gonna stay darker for longer. When you wash them, as gentle as humanly possible. So maybe it's in the sink or in the tub, inside out, very, very gentle detergent, soak, little bit of agitation, hang dry. The less agitation you put on the exterior of that fabric, the darker it's going to stay. If you're gonna use detergent, use like a wool light dark, something that is designed to keep dark colors dark. And that's basically it. Um, If you wanna keep dark denim dark, don't be hard on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there is no there is no magic solution. The only the only magic solution is the the wool light dark. And that again isn't gonna it's not a you know uh it's not gonna oh, it, they'll still fade a little bit. There's still gonna be color changes in that water. It's gonna happen. But it keeps things darker for longer. It doesn't keep them darker forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um if you know, sometimes we do release a gene that is dyed with um, reactive dye so that it wouldn't fade like indigo um, to keep it, you know, dark blue. Mm-hmm. I don't think we have anything li- like that currently in stock, but keep an eye out for yeah. that. Yeah. Chris Griffin writes I'm a, about uh, his his ability to, to quote dates and things uh, for, for mm. these live streams. I'm a cultural historian. I first started taking notes on questions I had about trends and styles. It quickly turned into more. 
I document a lot of culture I consume. It's a terrible habit. Wouldn't recommend. Well, it is, is a um, amazing. Yeah, it's it's an amazing talent, and you know, at some point, we are going to need a historian for the brand. Somebody who do yeah, kind of need somebody. So, so stick around, Chris. We can't remember Chris. everything. There might there might be a career in this for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, there, there, there definitely will be a point where we need to document everything that we did. I want to make a book. I want to have all this stuff done um, so that we can, you know, showcase our history. Um, okay, uh, C. Sanchez, a uh, Wonder Looper question. Could you embroider a Japanese character? Like, uh, it depends. All right. That's my answer. I have done yeah. it. Yeah. But there are Japanese characters that I would certainly not go into even attempt. Like my own name would not work. Okay. Uh, anyways, if you have a question about that, you can send us a, a DM and we'll, uh, we can look into that mm-hmm. for you. Um, okay. Um, BD, I'm at my aunt's house this weekend. Even in her 70s, she knows it's an essential to hang my jeans to dry over the chair. Sorry. Even in her 70s, she knows it's essential to hang my jeans to dry over the chair uh, and not the dryer. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of wisdom in our in our uh, aged <laughs> population. You know, you know, like the first uh, realization that I had that some people never wash their jeans was a Fabrice commercial back in the days mm. in Japan. And it was about a like mom washing uh, her son's jeans and he gets so upset uh-huh. and then that was like she knows the fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> and funny. that was uh, yeah so i mean yeah family members yeah. they will have to adapt to your mm. obsession i guess there was an episode an early episode of degrassi junior high for my canadian uh canadian you know 80s Friends. television show fans mm-hmm. out there uh, where Joey Jeremiah is getting ready for school picture day, and he's got his beautifully beat up denim jacket, and uh, he comes home to find out that his mother did the worst thing possible, and that was clean up his room and uh, basically destroyed his his worn in denim jacket. She had cut it up, and I guess she was using it to patch things, mm. and he was so upset, and then he had to get a. Uh, he bought a, a denim jacket from another kid in the class that was also equally destroyed. But it was important for him to have this very, very beat up. You, he did not want that a new was one. That his yeah. luck. Yeah, yeah, that was his very luck. Very iconic. He, he, but just remember how upset you would get when your mom cleans your room? And it's like, that's amazing. Like, she's just cleaning your room for you. And you just get like, that's the worst thing yeah. in the world. You touched all my stuff, <laughs> mom. Yeah. Shout what out to all jerk. the moms out there. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, my mom clean washed my raw jeans. <laughs> it's, like... it's okay. It'll be fine. That's out of love. It's out of love. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, do the comfort cords fade? NV asks the question. Uh, they do fade. Yes. Uh, it's, they are made from rope dyed indigo yarns, so they will fade. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, Chris Griffin writes about. Wanting to document, I actually asked Garrett if you still do look books as appearing in podcast episode four. Uh, we don't do look books. We haven't done a look book in a while. Um, it's probably something we could get back into doing. It's just, it's a lot of time. It's a, it's a lot of effort. We don't have the manpower to to do very much more than we're doing right now content wise yeah um and it's also that we started like pumping out more products yeah it's if we if we put the brakes on a little bit and yeah. and um which might happen but if we pump the brakes a little bit just to kind of give us a little br- bit of breathing room um then we could probably do something like that but you know with the amount of product that we put out we're, we're it's a lot and to 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 shoot absolutely everything and give it all the you know shine that it needs and that it deserves to have Mm -hmm. i wish we could do it all but uh yeah it's it's not something that we can easily accomplish um all that said i know at hq we're 
redesigning our photo studio right now. So I think, in fact, you, you've already seen it in the Spring Summer 23 for, uh, product photography. Like the, the on model shots are definitely a lot better. Um, you know, it, it shooting on model is just another world than just product, like product shots to do good product shots. It, it, it takes a, the right eye. Right. And, and so that took us a while to establish that. And then of course the on model is the best because you get to see how it actually looks on a body, mm -hmm. but that is a, like a total new layer of complication. Um, you know, hiring the model, making sure it fits, making sure that, you know, we're not the kind of company where we can hire, you know, a, a handful of models to be in there. So, you know, you, you hire one or two people to come in for the day, maybe it's two days, and, like, if something doesn't fit them, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to do your best to try and make work. And, you know, some, like, I know in the past, you know, maybe some of the photos, they look too tight on the model because mm -hmm. it just didn't fit. But, like, what do you... What do you at some point, you're just like, I got to use what I got. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, if we were huge, then you've got a lot more play in that room. But sometimes we were like, okay, we've got two days to do all this stuff. We just got to do yeah. and, work with what we got. And the thing is, like, a lot of the times, like, you know, like, you might notice in uh, Spring Summer 23 new collection, like, some of the items don't have a, a model photo. Yeah. Because the sample is not the correct fit. We made changes right. since then and so we have to like wait till the you know either the new sample or the production comes in and just things like that it, it's it's very finicky there's a yeah. lot of moving parts yeah that's it um okay we've just passed the one hour mark on the live stream and if you haven't already hit that like button hit that like button right now everybody we'll, i'll give you i'll give you a second i'll give you a second hit that like button just gently tap it and if you're if you're not a subscriber double check and hit that subscribe button right now. We're on the road to 10,000 subs. Mm -hmm. We're we're going to hit it in like I think the next within the next 2 weeks. Oh. Yeah. I feel like we've been saying this for a long time. Yeah, it's it we're there. We're all we're just at the cusp of it. We're at like right. 9,900 something. So we're just spread the word. Yeah, spread the word everybody. Tell a friend if you got more than one YouTube account. Subscribe with both. <laughs> subscribe with both. Just do it. Um, let's just get, I just, I want to see that 10,000 mark. I hope so. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, there's my little ad. Oh, we got someone at the door. Maybe we got a package. Who knows? Um, okay. It, maybe it's the fire inspectors like last time. Um, okay. Um, Chris Griffin, uh, writes, to continue, I told Garrett, I'm about a hundred miles away from a distributor. Uh, there are some things I'd like to see in person. LOL. Scratch and snap. Emperor of Slav. King of Lord. Lord of Nep. For example. Um, all right. Well, hey, if you ever, if you're ever in the Montreal area, you are you are welcome to come on, come on down. We'll show you we'll show you how the sausage is made, so to speak. We don't make sausages, but we make jeans. We got a factory there. Um, okay. Um, uh, Rolando Ramirez, what's the most asked for re-release? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I would say in the history of re-releases, the Akuma denim. I was going to say. Yeah. That is the most requested. That is. But, we, and, yeah, I mean, in, just in fabrics, we re-released them. Yeah. But I think well, one of the top ones for a while was the Rainbow Core. Yep. And we did re, -re Yeah, re that, that's true. Them. Yeah. yeah. Rainbow Core, oftentimes Elephant yes. 2 is still mm -hmm. uh, talked about a is lot. Is that the beige wax one? No, oh. that's the original, like, classic dark indigo white weft. Oh. It was the first 21-ounce elephant. Uh -huh. So, like, the what first was elephant was 19 ounces, oh, I see. and then yeah. we bumped it up to 21. Was it 21 or 22? Maybe, I think it was 22. Mm -hmm. And um, that one, that one gets a lot of love. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Elephant 2 base has been the base of a lot. Of, the Elephant 2 and the Elephant 5 bases are, are the, the ones that get the most kind of, you know, reworkings. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, the, those would be some of the biggest, uh, the biggest callbacks that we've mm -hmm. ever had. Um, yeah, of, oftentimes it's the, it's the color core stuff. I'm sure, like, I'm not, 
I don't know how much rainbow core we have left right now. Maybe not a lot. Um, but I'm sure once it's gone, like a year and a half, two years after, like they're really gone, we're going to we're gonna hear it again. Mm-hmm. We're going to hear it again. Um, what will the double dirty fade fade be like? Um, I'll see if I can get some kind of photos up for that. Um, because we've had some... I'm just trying to think, like, to see if we have any, like, brown fox or something like that um, yeah. that uh, has been faded out. I'll, before we put the video up, when we do when we do the dir- Double Dirty Fade release, I'll, I'll try to find some examples of what a, like, a dark earth-toned weft gene is going to fade into. So, okay. uh, so stay tuned for that. And the... Like regular dirty fade. Yeah, yeah. I have so I have a faded combination of those two. Right. Yeah. I'll uh I have to get my dirty fade faded jeans from the office. Maybe I'll get them to send it to me, um, or I'll, I'll get them to take some video. Anyway, I'll figure it out. I'm on it. I'm on the case. Um, okay. Uh, Nicholas Vilpu writes: Any plans for a Wabash shirt? Mm, not right now. I wouldn't say never. I just, uh, yeah. I just, I that, just, it's that just world not. It's very like played out. And also, we don't have a good body for like that yeah. kind of shirt. We need to figure out like a new fit. Yeah. I we, feel, you know? Right. We need something with like snap button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it more could... like a western yeah. kind of look. Yeah. It, just, it could be the workwear fit, but I don't think like easy shirt is not not the right. No, like it, like actually like the work shirt. The, the slimmer work shirt work might work for that. Yeah. Anyways, we'll see. We'll see. It's not. It's not. I would say that it's not something that everyone's like begging us for no i think it's like you know there's abundance of waba shirt from a lot of like heritage oriented mm-hmm. denim brands and we're kind of not one of them yeah. <laughs> like, like we 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 toe the line yeah but yeah we're not all it's the not way really yeah. a world mm. so much well i'm not gonna say never right but yeah there's, there's no current plans for that um Okay, uh, 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 Yasser uh, Dogany writes, do you think combined silk with denim? Or, like, have we ever done it? We've done silk blend jeans mm-hmm. before. We've done it a few times, actually. There's actually a silk blend uh, 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 flannel yeah, uh, fabric. fabric. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm not opposed to it. In fact, in fact, we've got a silk blend denim coming up uh Next Friday. Yes. Not in the way that... Not in we... the traditional sense. <laughs> but um, the uh, the recycled kimono salvage, this is going to be next Friday's release. And we're going to have a video up for this next week. Uh, we're going to really be able to see all the details up close. But it's a really fantastic gene. Mm-hmm. First, 11.8 ounce. It's... Pretty classic weight, but it's it's fairly rigid. And for those people looking for neppy denim, this really is super neppy. It just it sometimes it might be hard to see it, but like you can see just how neppy that fabric is. And when you really get a close look at it, it's it's actually quite hairy as well. But what's really neat about this fabric is that it's made from a blend of cotton and recycled Japanese silk kimonos. Mm -hmm. So there's, I think, 10% silk in here, Mm -hmm. and that is derived from the kimono. And they chop up old kimono fabrics that are, you know, just old, I guess. It can't be repurposed. And... um, And they just... So, like, you see a lot... These are, like, multicolored, like silk nips in there. Yeah, and they're not super apparent, but when you take a... You have to... You you gotta get at the right light and you see it. It might be hard to see. But you'll see like, you know, you see kind of like an orange spot here and you'll see these little colored specks throughout the fabric. Oh, yeah. And it definitely might be hard to see here, but I'll I'll, I'll share some like really close-up photos uh, of it and you'll see it on the inside, you'll see it on the outside, but 
if you want a fabric that's really full of character, mm -hmm. this is a really fun way to do that. Mm -hmm. So you do have that softness, not like it's not super apparent that there's silk in here, but you do get that softness. But what's neat about it is that because it is a recycled fabric, the fibers aren't particularly long, so you get this natural hairiness and this natural slubbiness and this natural neppiness out of this fabric. And, and it's not just like nap as in like no, a, there's like know, little, little knots yeah. and like little like strings, like you know, it kind of looks like you just like had a sewing project and have yeah. like a little you know yarn yeah. cuttings yeah. stuck to your leg. It looks like that, but it's just all over. And there's like these little loops and knots. Yeah. So, anyways, it'll definitely be hard to see on this camera, but I will show it off in. Uh, with some yeah, like good macros and videos here. and yeah. super close-ups of it. But you can see how like those strands just kind this of loop come off. Out. Yeah. yeah, you got that loop there. So a really, really beautiful fabric up close. And it's a great story. Yeah. Great story. Fits great fits great, feels great. And uh anyways, next week you'll you'll get the full rundown of the recycled kimono selvage. Um it's a real winner. It's a real winner. If uh it would be a hard, I don't know, I'd say between the hard and soft, this is, if you want a classic American, definitely the hard and soft, mm -hmm. but if you want something that's really full of character. Mm -hmm. But without being too loud. Yeah, this is a good yeah. One. This is full of character in a sense that like the details are very specific. Like you really have to know what's going on in here to understand how it's made. But. But this that's one just, is great, just, like a wearing experience yeah, yeah. is so yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's like inside is the long staple, very smooth. Yeah. You put you put it on, this is your classic dark indigo denim, but it's got a lot of, I would say, power under the hood. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, you can really see what's happening here. And But it's not like a rainbow core or a... Uh, you know, a colored weft denim yeah. in the sense that, like, it's... Not really in your face. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Th this fits in the realm of, you know, I'm wearing a classic clean pair of dark indigo jeans, but then you can really see what's happening here. You, more so, you have to understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so, two great dark, classic dark indigo options for you. Uh, these are out today. This is the hard and soft selvage. And Ooh, this, this is the recycled out. kimono that will be coming out next, next Friday. Friday. So, uh, so a silk blend denim, if, uh, if you're looking for one. Um, uh, Chris Griffin writes, so excited for the kimono. My friend and I will probably be placing an order together. He just bought his, uh, the recycled, his first raw. Uh, so he just, he got the, uh, the lightweight, the lightweight recycled. recycled. Oh, this, this one right here. Yeah, there's, there's two recycled options this season so mm -hmm. um this one is the the 11 ounce version of a, a, a jean that we put out previously we call it was just the recycled salvage this is the lightweight recycled salvage we got the recycled kimono uh yeah, yeah there's so actually recycled cotton in this one as well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh so but yeah. like recycled denim recycled is denim. used on the warp outside yeah. whereas like this one the recycled kimono is used on the inside and the left yarn yeah so. Yeah, we we uh, the our ability to make denim out of just so many different things is it never ceases to amuse me how many different ways we can like interpret this fabric, mm -hmm. right? A lot of brands, it's just well, here you go, here's a pair of dark indigo raw jeans, mm -hmm. and you know I don't know why I'm thinking of this, but just I think a couple days ago there was some like video in my YouTube feed that showed up like the top five denim brands are, you know, rating these jeans. And there's something about the approach, you know, when I watch like a, a like a Stridewise or a Cameron O or, or, you know, an Iron Snail or, um, Carl. you know, Carl Murawski, when I watch their videos and their approach to like heritage wear, denim, like, boots there's so much more of an understanding of like what goes into making these products good and whenever i watch like a streetwear kind of young fashion guys perspective and i get that they're young and maybe but to be fair those other guys are young too but there's always just this like 
I read the marketing material, and that's as far as my depth and knowledge of any of this goes. And even then, it's like, you know, they'll, they'll put the jeans on. They're like, the fabric feels good. Like, yeah, well, the the quality is high. And it's like, Based what? on what? Yeah, yeah. what makes you yeah. think the quality is high? I yeah. just want to know. Yeah. And I'm not even being mean. I'm just like, I'm curious to see, yeah. like, what makes you feel like the, the yeah. fabric is high quality yeah. as opposed to low quality? And, and like, they're rating these jeans. And, like, this jean is a 10 out of 10. And I'm like, 10 out of 10? So nothing could be better than this jean that you're showing off right now. That is just like a basic, in my opinion, just a very ordinary basic gene you could have got from a gajillion companies. Even if yeah. it's something very special, yeah. you clearly don't know yeah. about it because you're not talking about right. it. <laughs> yeah, there was there was no talk about how the fabric's made, what's special about it, you know, dyes, production methods, zero. Like this, these genes are good. Like yeah. And that's that's yeah. not really like it's the Andy Bernard approach to uh, you know being <laughs> yeah. a food critic. <laughs> it's uh, like you could do that. It's like a you know shopping with your friend. Yeah, and which is fine, but it's like why would anybody watch your yeah? Video? So, sometimes I watch it just because I find it to be amusing. Um, but... I, I think it's good to know like what people see mm, perceive right, yeah, yeah. as good. That's true. I, right. I, I want to know what, yeah, people's perspectives are, and I, certainly, you know, these are these are creators who have a sizable following, so people are watching it. But I, generally, when it comes to denim content, I really want people to understand what goes into making a good jean. And so does my cat Snowy here. He's just very excited to see all these cups and uh, he's uh, all these denims that he can put yeah, put his, his fur, fur on. on. Sometimes you might see some product photos with fur on it, and he's the reason. Um, okay. Um, Emilio Hernandez writes, people generally either go down a path of quality, la down a path of quality less is more or all trends all the time. Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of, look, I'm, look we've, when you're young, you tend to be more of a trend jumper hmm. and you get old and you get old uh you start to settle in your ways you know what you like and you like what you like but i, I just my my problem is that like if you if you, from a trend perspective if this is trendy this is what i like this you know talk about it in that respect fine but when you start talking about quality and mm -hmm. your only description or descriptor of quality is that it's good it it's it's so, yeah. yeah it's, it's like it's, a level. Yeah, it's very, very place. low level uh, understanding of what's yeah. happening, or no understanding. Uh, but yeah, um, Andreas Paven writes, "Hey, can you show us those new mugs? Not sure if you did already. Just tuning in. Well, we've got the new mugs right here. In fact, if you watch the replay, uh, we, we we go over a little bit of our personal mug collection. Mm -hmm. but, uh, we've got the new mugs available now." These are selling really fast. Yeah. If you want the jade, don't wait. I don't think it'll make it past the weekend. These, they'll make it past the weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. But it's a good yeah. price, too. So, yeah. And then we're going to make this again, too. It's yeah. just like we didn't, they're, they're selling better than expected. So, yeah. it might go fast yeah. this time around. Uh, it seems like, yeah. I, I mean, I think like they'll all eventually sell out and we will replenish them. But the, the jade ones will sell out the fastest. Yeah. Um, Should have made more. Yeah. Andreas Paven, I'm going to the NYC store tomorrow. Definitely getting all three. Mm. Uh, we do in-store pickup at New York. I don't know what the New York inventory level is right now. Mm -hmm. I, I suppose I could check. Um, but uh, it's possible that they might not have all three. Three. We didn't send a ton to yep. New York. Yeah, but... Uh, I think even, like, when we started this live stream, we sold, like, 10 Jedi on top 10 Yoko. Right. So they're they're going. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you can... Uh, if you're going to go tomorrow to get the mugs in store, um, maybe place an online order and, uh, and do an in-store pickup. I'll tell you this right now. Right now, there's one Jadeite mug left in New York. 
The other two we have stock, but there's only one jadeite. So put that order in and uh, and uh, do it for in-store pickup just to reserve your 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 units there. Um, uh, okay, Olorg writes, people are becoming more aware of what quality actually means and it's folks like you and the information that you put out there that helps this flourish going into the future. Well, I, I like to think so. Um, you know, we are, uh, we're a small channel. I mean, look, my, the problem is in general, we do these live streams, which are, I think, generally more informative, uh, but people like to consume quick content mm -hmm. and I'm not good at making the quick informative content, maybe not yet. Maybe I'll get to that and uh, we'll be able to, you know, grow this channel and have more people understand what it is that goes into making a good pair of jeans. But yeah, the amount of, uh, you know, young people fashion content on YouTube is abundant. And oftentimes, you know, these are people who are very detached from the industry at large. You know they're fans, mm -hmm. and they're 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 certainly they're consumer yeah. reviewers. Yeah, yeah, they're they're consumer but reviewers who uneducated. They, yeah, they don't consumer. have a lot of experience. Yeah, but their presentations are entertaining, so they get an audience, and unfortunately, sometimes that will lead to more information that isn't great. Yeah, to but, flourish. But it's just the yeah. thing is like you can't explain um, quality in ten seconds videos. Yeah, it's very difficult to do so. And you know, if you don't want to spend more than you know ten seconds on the product knowledge, then you really can't understand. Yeah, uh, that blonde dude writes, "Twist my arm, just picked up a jadeite." All right, all right. And then, uh, <laughs> well, there you go. Um, somebody else wrote the same thing. Mike Knight, I was one of those buying at the start of the stream. <laughs> Bezad sold me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see, New York is that is that Jadeite? We still have the one Jadeite. There's one Jadeite in New York. Um, okay. Um, IRL is dead. Writes, how can you find heritage denim jean pants with suspender buttons? Can they be sewn? Can they easily be sewn on? I would say your best bet is to sew them on yourself. Suspender yeah. buttons? Yeah. yeah, just sew them on yourself. Yeah. Um, you're, you're not going to find them. And the ones that you find might... Look, maybe you find jeans that have the suspender buttons on them, but maybe the fit isn't right for you. Right. Find a fit that's right for you, and then put the suspender buttons on. And the beauty is, like... If you get some pretty flat buttons, mm -hmm. you don't always have to wear them with suspenders. Like you can throw a belt and it's going to cover right. them on top. Um, so consider that. Consider that. Um, okay. Um, BD writes, order Jadeite and text mug this morning. The missus and I enjoy coffee daily with these. All nice. right. Fantastic. We, we will as well. Um, you know, I refrained from using them until like basically this morning. Like I think we might have used one of them once or twice, but yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I wanted to enjoy them when you guys could enjoy them. And uh, anyway, use them for photos and things like that. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've we've had them for a while. For a long time. Yeah, yeah. we've had them for a while. Um, okay. Um, Oak Odell writes, I know what works for me now and have refined to a top five. Not so much a collector anymore, for sure, have loyalty to Naked and Famous. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's just, that's just the way it goes. Yeah. Once, once you, I'm, I'm a, I'm all patterns. I, I like what I like. You know, I don't like to change things up too much. I like the brands that I like and uh, the products that I use. So I'm, I'm very, very like, you know, like my kettle. Like, I buy we had the same kettle in Montreal. I bought it, and like when that thing wears out, I'll buy the same one. I, I will not buy another yeah. kettle. Like right. that's my kettle, and and it's like you know <clears throat> when you go, you when you find your favorite restaurant, yeah, you just like you you go to that one, yeah, because like there's other restaurants yeah, but might I, be better, yeah. but it's like why waste my time? Yeah. I like I know I like that yeah. restaurant. I don't go there. There's this Japanese uh, interior design magazine that we get and. This one guy built a house, a beautiful house, and then he built a second house exactly the same as his other, as his first house. And I'm like, that's exactly what I would do. 
Like, if I could build a house here and say I had another house somewhere else, I would want to build the exact same house. I'm if not if sure I, I like what I like, that. I want it, and I want this. I, generally speaking, I want the same, you know, electronic. I just want it all. I just want like my space like in everywhere. Electronic. Yeah and stuff like that things that you use in the house perhaps but houses are also very like dependent on like the environment mm, sure so yeah. i don't necessarily think like every single house has that you own in different parts of the world should look the same i think yeah. it, part of the fun is that you get to do something different yeah that's part of the fun but as a creature of habit i would there's nothing that would make me happier than like oh like I know this is all the same. I like this is I like this. Oh, I'm you're le- gonna yeah. confuse yourself. Like, <laughs> like you wake I'm... up and then, where, where, which house yeah. am I? Sometimes when we're on like trade show, like travel tours, and we're in like different cities every other day, like I'll wake up in a hotel room and be like, I don't know where I am. Like where am I again? Oh, like yeah. for for like a minute, you're like. I think yeah. that happens to everybody yeah. when you travel a mm. lot. Wow. Um, I like how we're like assuming that we're gonna have multiple houses that we design. <laughs> we're not. Don't worry. <laughs> we're not. This is dream. This is I'm, I'm fantasy booking this. <laughs> uh, okay, that blonde dude writes. One of your previous streams, you showed off your milk glass collection. I can't get over how much these go for now on the secondary market. Uh-huh. Sent me down a rabbit hole I wasn't expecting. Yeah, certain mugs can go for a lot. Yeah. Other mugs, look, I. My recommendation is, unless you're a serious collector, you know, don't spend a uh, hundred dollars or two hundred or five hundred dollars on a mug, right? And also, like, in if you live in North America, there are still like you, you can know find ones them in the wild. that you can like yeah. find for like if you go on eBay, obviously people who yeah. are selling them know the value and know how much they can you yeah. know sell it for. But if you go on the, like a random um like garage sale flea or market. like flea market, yeah. there's definitely some treasure still left. Yeah, there's there there's still findable out there. Um, but yeah, when you look on eBay, you're only gonna find stuff that resellers look there are people out there who know what to look for in a vintage store and they know what it's going to sell for online so they'll find a mug like this and they'll buy it for five bucks or ten bucks 20 bucks in the wild and they know it's going to sell for a hundred so they do and you know can't blame them i mean if you're looking for this mug specifically you don't have to travel and scour the flea markets every weekend. You can just have it right now. So mm-hmm. if it's worth 100 bucks to you to save you all that time for finding it in the wild, sure. Personally, I like finding things in the wild. Every now and then I might splurge and spend a little bit of extra money on something that I really, really want. But yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy the hunt. I That's part yeah. of my collector mentality. Mm-hmm. Treasure hunting yeah. aspect, yeah. and also just like the the like satisfaction you get from like finding a better deal than somebody else. Yeah, like you know, in my in our movie collection, there's a couple of gold mine gems in there, just out of print Blu-rays and movies that you can't get anymore. They're worth they're not worth a fortune. Maybe I might have a disc that's worth a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, but. Like, I'm never going to sell it also. Mm -hmm. Like, so for me, like, the value of all of these is really, like, there is none. Because it's it's just, I I enjoy it. I'm never never selling any of these. They they will just pile up in my house forever. And whoever inherits all of our stuff will then do whatever they want with it. Who knows? But I plan on living forever, so. uh, Too bad. Too bad. Too bad. Um, okay. Uh, 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 Atlas uh, Primo writes, love how your cat is able to just sit there. I agree. It's being very good today. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is a a good, good job, Snowy. Um, uh, uh, Rolando Ramirez writes, Bayshead wants to live in those American suburb developments where the entire street is the same house. No. I want, like, if it was my house, like, my designed home. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, I know. I mean, right. Yes. It would be different. I know, I know. I and, and those developments, they're here in Japan, too, oddly enough. Like, like certain neighborhoods, I, I've seen them, where they're very much like, they, it looks like America. Mm-hmm. And literally, 
every house is the same house. Mm-hmm. Like, not there's not even a deviation. Like, it's the same house, row after row after row. It's amazing. It's weird. Well, there's Japanese yeah. versions of yeah. that, and then there's also American version of that in Japan too. Yeah, like yeah, it's 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 funny. But like, I was reading about like an article on like some kind of you know like interior things and. You know, there are also areas that are developed, mostly like in Okinawa or like somewhere where the bases, American bases are. And like they they have also areas where like these are like areas that these, you know, foreign soldiers or whatever going to live. And then they build their like own versions of their homes. So like the, the plot is like really big and you actually have a house that is an American house. But, or it looks like an American house, yeah. but it's different, like, you know, most American yeah. neighborhoods. And I, 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 I kind of want to try living in them. It just mm. feels <laughs> yeah, cool. Right. No? It's like you, you're in Japan, but you yeah. live um, in, in America, home. basically. Yeah. And everywhere you look is America. Yeah. I, would, I, would, I would like to do that. I've never been on the American bases or, like, you know, they have, like, the like their little town home kind of, like, residences set up on the bases. Yeah. I, I would like to I would like to see that. Anyways, if there's any uh American base uh people American base people. <laughs> uh if you're in Japan and you're on an American military base and uh you're allowed to have visitors, I'd love I'd love to visit. I also want to go you into the store. Into like, the store. Yeah. You, you it's not Walmart, but it's basically Walmart and you yeah. have all the American stuff. Yeah. I really want to go. I really didn't take advantage when my friend was in the in Nyakoska. I really should have yeah. more. I've I've seen videos of people going there and it's like like this is amazing. It oh, was it, yeah. it really yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Just kind of a you know weird like what is going on here? Yeah. Uh Olorg writes driving out of Toronto into the into the uh country, you feel like you're in the twilight zone hell passing through the suburbs. LOL. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, I don't know which direction you're going, but um, they're, I would say that the Toronto suburbs are not as cookie cutter as some other suburbs I've seen. Mm. Yeah, like, you know, you'll have these townhouse developments for sure. Like, if you're going out to, like, Brampton and, like, Milton area, like, you mm-hmm. see a lot of, like, the same house being built. Mm-hmm. But some, like, sometimes I see that there's certain deviations, like, but... Yeah, I've seen some of the places that we've we've been around here where it's literally the exact same house. Yeah, like if like, you come home drunk, you would yeah, not go to the wrong know home. <laughs> Easy. house you live in. Yeah. Um, Junior writes, what jacket am I wearing? I am wearing the lightweight recycled selvage stone blue. That's what, I'm, uh, that's what I got on at the moment. Um, Olorg, New Market particularly. All right. I, have, I don't know when the last time I've been out into New Market was. Is it in the name uh, of the city? Yeah, New Market, Ontario. Um, Brandon B. Blue Jay uh, Selvage release when? No ETA yeah. yet. St- it might be on the later side yeah, of prob- spring release. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, da, 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 da. What's the best black naked and famous jeans for getting high contrast fades? Solid black? Solid black. Selvage? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, I do have a faded pair of those. Mm-hmm. Um, I would um, get them, but Snowy's. Wearing oh, Reese is wearing them right now, actually. Solid black. Yeah, might be. I, mine's I, I think not it might very be, high uh, contrast. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, maybe you got to stand up here. But I don't have a lot of whiskers. Yeah, you have some. It, they're they're coming along okay. Yeah, I yeah. wash mine a lot, so yeah. I don't get like a lot of high contrast. But yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I'll we'll, we should do a, a. Anyway, I gotta do fade reviews too. And we can we can compare. We got two pairs of black faded mm-hmm. solid blacks here mm-hmm. to show. But yeah, if you want a nice fading pair of black, uh, you've got it uh, in the solid black salvage. Pierre Morrow, nice uh, petty reset. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Very not proper. Of me. Boom. Uh, okay. Uh, Pedro writes: milk glasses glow in the dark, orange or green for Halloween. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a glow-in-the-dark version of these cups before. 
That would be cool, though. That would be cool, and it kind of looks like that. You know, the yellow. It looks, one, yeah. Like it does, like it would glow in the dark. Yeah. Or like even if the glass wouldn't glow in the dark, like if we the could print. have the print glow in the dark, that would be cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, Write it down. Okay, uh, Nick Tax, uh, are uh, are there any plans for a light blue stretch denim? Light blue stretch, mm, not at the moment. Um, we do have the new Frontier salvage company. That's another light blue. It'll be a rinse washed unsamphorized denim. So we're taking a lightweight uh, repro fabric. Um, it's kind of like a natural, a light natural indigo type of color. Um, in fact, that's what we have Tate and Yoko for. Uh, so let's pull it up on the screen here. Uh, let me find it first. Um, uh, new. Uh, okay, so let's pull it up on the screen. We've got the new Frontier Salvage. Do we have fits of everything? I don't know. We do. I didn't even know we had the samples. Uh, okay, so let's pull that up. So we've got the new Frontier Salvage. This is a 100% cotton, 8.75 ounce lighter weight denim. Now, what's neat about this fabric is that it is unsamphorized, but we rinse wash the jeans for you. So we take all that, that shrinkage out of the fabric. The fabric is nice and it's got a nice drape to it right off, uh, right from the beginning. Um, and uh, yeah. If you're looking for something lightweight, summery, that, that selvage edge, I really, really like that. This is gonna be a good option for you. It doesn't have the stretch, but the fact that it is a lighter weight and uh, it'll be a looser kind of draping fabric right from the start might be okay for you. You see it's a little tight on the model here, but uh, it, so long as you, you get in your right size, I would even recommend getting them a little bit bigger um, and just wearing them like nice and casually loose uh, I think it'll be a nice uh, fitting jean uh, that way. So um, consider that option for... Yeah. Uh, Another light blue option is Sakura Sky. It is also 100% uh, cotton, right. but it is more of a light, light blue um, color. Yeah, let's uh, let's go to the Sakura Sky. Let's show that one off. Um, let me just pull it up. Let's go through here. Um, that's the Dusty Rose, Elephant S Grand Drell. So if you go on Tate and Yoko, you can, you can browse through the entire spring summer collection. Um, here we go. So this is the Sakura Sky. And you can see it here, a nice light blue color, 12 ounces, 100% cotton, um, pale blue. Very, very classic look. It looks like the lightweight recycled in terms of like color you know, in that in that lighter blue world, but the weft has a little bit of pink on the inside. So it's got a little bit of a rosiness, little cherry blossom look to the undertone of that fabric. So that'll be another good light blue option for you for the spring. It is 12 ounces, but I think this is easy to wear all year round. You can wear that in the in the summertime. It's not the lightest denim in the world, but uh, I still think you'll you'll be able to wear that through the spring summer, no problem. So uh, consider the Sakura Sky uh, for another lightweight, light well not lightweight but light blue option for the spring, spring summer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, Andres says bought the last jade mug in New York City. Oh, he got it. He's the one who said he was going to pick it up. But, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, right. it, is it, was he? I, I, yeah. Wasn't he? I'm, I'm going to presume yes. Okay. I'm, uh, there's a lot of names going on. Yeah. Uh, but there you go. Um, we are sold out of jade mugs at New York. We still have a couple left of the, uh, the text logo and the tragic blonde logo. At New York, I doubt they'll make it past the weekend, but we'll, we'll try to restock them, uh, uh, shortly. Um, okay. Um, 
Chris Lombard, did you revise the strong guy cut? It looks less wide on the photos uh, of this collection. I would say it's probably the model. The, the model. Also the wash. Like yeah. if you're looking at New Frontier, like it's being washed, yeah. so it's soft and it drapes easier. Yeah. When it's raw, it looks wider because... Yeah, yeah that, it's, that it's too. Crunchy. Uh, but yeah, I would say that the model we had I uh, for that particular photo might have been a little... Uh, uh, the jeans were a little small for them. Mm, 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 so mm. we did the best we could. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, okay, Olorg writes, my high school art teacher had a mug where the, uh, with the statues on it. It would become oh, naked uh, when it, it was filled, filled with hot, hot coffee. coffee. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> Maybe idea. Maybe some tragic one rendition of that. That's yeah, like uh, some kind of uh, she would have a denim jacket. Oh. Yeah, some kind of thermochromic dye <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would yeah. uh, change. Mm -hmm. That'd be kind of funny. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Like, she's already naked. which We would have to get her to bones after. <laughs> or, or she would have like a jacket. Like a Halloween edition. She would, mm. she would take off her jacket. All right. Um... Francisco Michael, have you ever modeled for the product photos? Sometimes I think I'm going crazy and say to myself, those look like Bayes has arms. Oh, yeah. Oh, like a lot of shirts. <laughs> a lot, yeah. Like Not half so the jeans. shirts for spring, summer are me. I probably would have been more of the jean model if I was there for photo day. Yeah. But, but also, like, with jeans, you know, um, it's... Oh, I would be okay. Yeah, like, yeah. I, we've done that in the yeah. past with... with with the base out too, yeah. but you know, it's like when you're taller, you don't have yeah. to worry about coughing yeah. and having and all that. Yeah, but uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm all like guys. <laughs> yeah, we all do, honestly. <laughs> like everybody, Garrett yeah. did the shirt like yeah. a couple years Garrett's ago. Garrett's been too. in there, Tristan is used all the I've time. I've definitely yeah. been in there. Yeah, so, Tammy's been yeah. there. <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm a professional model, guys. <laughs> you're, you're married to a model. You're married to a model. I am, there you go. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah. We're uh. We're scrappy, guys. If you haven't noticed, we're very, very scrappy. We we do the best we can with what we got, and uh, I think I think we yeah we do uh we do a good job. Um. Francisco Michael Brandon should model a shirt just to throw us off. Brandon would fit and would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that the big difference is knowing how to pose. Um. Yeah. Like. It's one thing, like, I've gotten a lot better at it over the years, but just knowing how to move your body in a way that, like, it's going to make a yeah. nice photo, um, that's, like, that's no, half the battle. And, like, like, change it each time that, that the camera the is shot. Goes on. Yeah. I, I do, like, you know, working in, like, you know, power industry for, for a long time, like, I... I you know, it's in, like regular people say like, uh, like, well, models are just like looking pretty. Mm. But no, it actually takes skills. Yeah. And those are like, when you hire a professional, you can tell yeah. the difference. Yeah, the, the, the last girl we had for the spring summer shots mm -hmm. who came in, so good. Mm. She was so good. And uh, yeah, I, uh, we'll, we'll probably uh, give her a call again next mm -hmm. season when we need, when we need. Hopefully, she's uh, available. To be fair, yeah. Brandon might be the only one of us that never models. He really does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the ability to know how to pose is not an easy one. Um, it comes from yeah. like experience, confidence, all of that stuff. But yeah. it is it is a skill that is you know I think. A lot of people don't appreciate or yeah. think about so much but yeah it's, it's one thing important. to take like you know photos for instagram and you know right but because because you if you're yeah. taking one you know nice photo that's yeah. fine but especially with product photo shoots and stuff like yeah. you gotta do it like very quickly you have to have a good shot yeah like it's gotta be rapid yeah 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 because you don't have all day to take yeah. that one shirt up like product photo of the one shirt like yeah. you're like okay i've got a rack of 30 shirts we got to get through these you know and this is why like part of the reason that we don't have like faces in our in our photos yeah. it's because like the, to have a perfect face for that too also is yeah. is a very hard task yeah a lot of the pictures like you know you're like halfway through blinking and if you have to eliminate all of that 
from、uh, the photo you can,、yeah. you know, you took that to, to use. That's just insane. That would take hours. Yeah. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, and you really need a p r o f e s s i o n a l And you need a makeup crew. You need a hair. You need someone with makeup and hair. Because they're constantly having to fix it because you're taking the clothes off all the time. For sure.、Yeah. But also, you really need a professional、yeah. for that. For, it, for your、yeah. face to be always like, presentable. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's insane. It's,、uh, yeah. At, at, at a certain level, yeah, having faces in the photos is just a lot more, a lot more work. Um, Francisco Michael, so if Brandon messes up the shoot, will you tell him or will you allow it because he's the boss man? Oh no. No, he doesn't get a pass. Just Nobody gets a pass. <laughs> if something isn't right, it's not right. And like sometimes we just have to use what we got, but we have to, nothing, nothing ever gets a pass. It's always,、uh, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm a stickler in that sense. But、uh, yeah. Like, it'll at least be known whether or not. Look, sometimes you have to use what you have. Yeah, you, you can always have, like,、right. you know, 10、yeah. out of 10. Right. But if there's a problem with something, it will at least be known, and we will try to fix that or remedy to that problem the next time.、Uh, but yeah.、Um, Pedro writes Do the women's jeans have chain stitch hems as well? I'm pretty sure I saw one lady post her jeans. And they didn't have a chain stitch hem、so、on them. It depends.、Uh, chain stitch、uh, machine can only take a certain、uh, like, circumference. Width. Yeah. So,、um, stuff like Max or like smaller sizes of, well, especially the smaller sizes、mm-hmm. of Arrow and、uh, I think the Max and the High Skinny. Arrow, I'm not sure. Classic would always have chain stitch, I think. But、uh, yeah, the smaller opening、uh, fits will not go through、uh, chain stitch. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's it.、Um, Stefan writes this is a good、uh, question. I actually put my black jacket through a washer spin cycle and got some marbling. I'm not happy with any suggestions. Dye, fade it out. You got two options. My recommendation is just keep wearing it. You will fade it, and that marbling will just. Yeah. Work its way into the fabric. It'll be just a part of the character of the fabric. I know it looks a little off right now.、Mm-hmm. I know it. But the more you wear it, the more you fade it, the more it, 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 it washes. It'll, it'll fade in, and like, you know, those lines will be less pronounced because more of the jacket will start to fade. I'm telling you, it'll be something that you will start to appreciate. I'm sure it's, it's happened on your jeans here. Yeah, I can see、oh, it. Yeah. It just, you can like, stand I, up. You can see like this line here.、These. Like、yeah. our machine here. Yeah. I think it happens a lot because it's small. Yeah. Like in Canada, it didn't happen as often.、Yeah. But、uh, it, it just, that's part of it. Yeah.、Um, or if you're really, you know, you really just want the jacket to be black, get something called RIT dye, R I T. You can look it up on YouTube. It's very, very easy to use. You can get it on Amazon and just dye your jacket black、yeah. completely. So the two. Options that you mentioned、yeah. are literally the two、yeah. options that you have. I would say embrace it.、Yeah. Embrace it and wear it. It's like it's part of it. Yeah, it's just part of it.、Um, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, Nick Tack writes How does the elasticity of the kimono weft denim compare to 100% cotton denim?、Um, I think it'll probably wear just like 100% cotton. I don't、yeah. think you're going to have too much stretch issues.、Uh, yeah. Issues. I think they'll stretch out the same as you would expect from a 100% cotton pair of jeans.、Um, yeah. Um, uh, Kenny Ingram, I noticed that my natural seed doesn't have a chain stitch hem. Not that I really care. Yeah, it. I'm sure there, there have been some productions here and there that might not have had a chain stitch hem. They generally mostly do,、um, but it yeah, happens. There are times.、Yeah. You know, there's,、uh, I, I've got some like, books on like, old like, vintage Levi's jeans and things like that. And I like looking at them because, you know, within the raw denim community, there are always certain like,、uh, you know, hiccups about certain details.、Mm. And when I look through these old, These books and these photos of these old jeans. And I'm like, here are two perfect examples of like, you know, vintage 
you know, classic American jeans. Mm -hmm. One's chain stitch, one single needle stitch hem. And, like, they're showing, like, this is how it fades, you know, one one compared to the other. And, like, to me, I'm looking at them like they're both beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, one isn't more beautiful than the other. They're both beautiful and they're both just, you, you know their own details for their own detail sake. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I'll see things like where they compare like, you know, the stitches per inch and particular models and like, you know, one's tighter, one's wider, mm -hmm. or they'll talk about like how maybe janky the stitching is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, a lot of this is just part of the character of the fabric. It's like these old machines, they're not, they're not so uniform. So mm -hmm. they, they produce this kind of like off stitch or, or, or things like that. And, you know, sometimes I'll see, you know, maybe it's a comment on a forum or something like that, and they'll say, "Oh well, you know, they've have this brand has got the best stitching, blah blah blah." And 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 in the same breath, they're like, "Oh, you know, they they they're a repro brand," and I'm like, yeah, you see, there's a those two things sometimes can't really align right. You know, mm -hmm. if you're if you're telling me that you're gonna make something like authentically vintage, well then, you know, it can't be made on say, you know, newer modern machines that are going to produce, well, technically better quality stitching. Mm -hmm. Not to say that, like, you know, sometimes the janky stitching isn't, it's sometimes just as strong. Like, you really don't have, let's be real, like, you know, whether you buy jeans from, uh, you know, the mall store or wherever, like, your jeans tend not to fall apart at the stitching, mm -hmm. right? The stitching is usually, whether you're buying it from the lowest quality to the highest quality, the actual stitching quality, like mm -hmm. the, the its ability to hold, tends to hold up, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, I like seeing the old world stuff because it's like, it is a little bit off. Mm -hmm. And I like seeing that now because I'm like, I don't see that so much anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, because obviously, you know, factories, they want to produce the best they can. Mm -hmm. And it there's always a... a, a Hmm, I'm trying to explain it, but like there's a there's the way that the factory sees something as being a good quality and then there's something that like the the nerd mm -hmm. sees something and sometimes they're not aligned the same way. Oh, I think right? chain stitching is the greatest example. Mm -hmm. Like people think that chain stitch just means that it's chain stitch hem just means that it is higher quality. In fact, I, I, like it's it's a weaker um way of of, of um, stitching the the hem, so it's it's more. I uh, it, it was used because it was more efficient. Chain stitch is a little bit more efficient um, machine to use in the factory because you don't like you have um, cones. You can have cones, whereas like the the regular um, single needle. Yeah, single yeah. needle. Like your your bottom uh, thread. Yeah. Bottom thread is has to be in a um, little thing so that you have to change it often. Right. And that's why, like, a lot of long parts, like, are, of jeans are, are sewn with chain stitch, but chain stitch is not the strongest because once you, you get a, you know... A break a, in the, in the yeah, strand. Yeah, and then it goes... Yeah, and it, so it it's, not, it's not great, but, you know, like... And we use chain stitch because, you know, it's it's fun. It's yeah. old, old school details and not necessarily because for the better quality yeah. or yeah. for, yeah, it's just. It, it can hold, like, not to say that it can't hold up. Right. Certainly Obviously, it, it we wouldn't use it if up. it wasn't yeah, great, yeah. but yeah. It, it's also just as a comparison sake, it's, and, and for like factory efficiency mm -hmm. sake, it is more, you know, reliable and mm -hmm. like harder to work. Well, Chain stitch machines are harder to operate, but but then again, like you know, it's it's the efficiency factor that right. is there. So it's a lot, there's a lot of trade offs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for me, like certain details, you know, even a j like sometimes jank mm -hmm. to me is a really fun thing to look at. Uh, and I, I really like looking at it in really, really old jeans and being like, oh, wow, they made it like that. And like, you know, and the fact that like those jeans are still in existence, like it, it clearly it held up. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it was, so it wasn't a matter that like the quality was low, but you know, there is a certain like strive for, you know, perfection, but I like, I generally like, you know, imperfection. 
Well, imperfection also like you know just the variation in yeah, things. Yeah, right. Like not everything needs to be a carbon copy of something that you think is the best jeans ever. Like yeah. it's not. It. I think the charm is in the unique little things that each you know jean yeah. has. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, yeah, I can appreciate a lot of different things that go in mm-hmm. into jeans and like the strive for like the absolute perfection. You know. For me, sometimes it just seems a little like distant from what jeans to yeah. me mean, right? Yeah. This is a, a, a utility type of product. Yeah. Um, no, this is better because this, like, you know, Levi's, however many years old, like this yeah. one had this detail, so mine should have it too. It's like not necessarily. Not necessarily. Like you are buying a brand new jeans. But so. but also like if you're if like that's your basis like. Those old jeans also had jankiness to them, right? right sure. So, like when you when you do when you when you're trying to make that that way, to then make it like, but we're gonna make it better. I think you remove what was maybe special or yeah. inherent in that original. We're really product. in this weird yeah. section of the market yeah. where it's just like we like these details that makes things less than perfect Mm -hmm. but also we expect perfection like oh yeah it's amazing sometimes like how like you know um like our thing is you beat up your jeans you fade them yeah and then some customer would reach out to us saying like hey there's this slight like Nick. You know, yeah. well, like a little color fade on like just this part of my brand new jeans like, if you're gonna wear it, it's yeah. gonna happen in like two seconds. Yeah. Like, are you really saying that yeah. like you like, need your money back for yeah. that? Yeah. Like when you get our jeans from us, like they they come in a in a plastic bag. Yeah. But like in the factory, like all the jeans, you know, when they're going from like station to station, like they're just getting like stacked up. Yeah. Right. So they're rubbing against each other, and obviously, like at some point, like a jean, especially if they're stacked like twenty or thirty high, like they might rub against each other, and you might get a little bit of like discoloration yeah. on on a point here and there. Yeah, and the or idea like, uh, p- people who are sewing the jeans, their hands are all blue. Yeah, which means that all the dyes are on their hands, yeah. t- taken from these jeans. Like yeah. you cannot make yeah. this in the lab yeah. environment. Yeah. So, so every now and then we'll get a message where it's like these jeans are already like there's a there's a discoloration point here, and I'm like, are you planning on <laughs> keeping these them? in a like a vault? Yeah, you know, or are you gonna wear them? Because if you're gonna wear them. About 20 minutes into wearing them, something like that is going to happen yeah. to these jeans. So it just seems odd that, you know, and look, I get it. You want them to be brand new. I got it. But yeah. if you're if you're wearing these to fade and to destroy, like, it seems a little, like, weird. It seems like a weird complaint, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I understand, but it's yeah. like... No, no, we, yeah. like, there are things that we shouldn't send, yeah. Even though yes. you're gonna, you know, like that's gonna happen over time. There are things that we shouldn't send when you, you know, tell them these are brand new pair of jeans. But you know, when it's just like a thing that just, you know, the, the indigo c- came off a little too much and like little tiny spot, I just don't think that's a valid yeah complaint. You want to answer that one? Uh huh. This one. Um, I do not. I have not. Oh. Okay, well, well, the Raven asks, has anyone heard about the salt trick to keep the dye in your denim? I recently heard of it and might try it. Well, Salt? Huh? Yeah. It, I don't think it's good for your machine. Yeah. I, I think it also goes back to uh, what we said earlier in the stream about uh, vinegar and, like, uh-huh. if you want to keep your jeans dark... Be easy on them. Salt isn't going to do anything. Vinegar isn't going to do anything. Wash them less. Yeah. Wear them less. Maybe get a second pair so that you can alternate between them. Put less wear on each pair. Wash them inside out. Gentle detergent, like a wool light dark to keep things dark, hang dry. The more agitation you put on the indigo side, the more it's going to fade. Yeah. The less, the less it fades. That's the only way to keep them dark. Yeah. There's no, there is no magic trick. There's right. no special solution. Like you know, special denim washes. They don't do anything. Yeah. Uh, just get wool light dark. The the good people at. Uh, yeah. 
I don't know who makes Will Light Dark, but the good people there um, have got their fabric scientists yeah. on the case. And again, again we'll, we'll probably going to make reactive dyed jeans mm-hmm. sometime in the future again. Yeah. So that, that's the other option. Yeah. All right. Andreas writes, hey, can you make a shout out to my wife, Erica? Uh, we're watching together right now. We did our engagement uh, photo oh. shoot at the Naked and Famous NYC store. Shout out to you, Erica. Shout out to you, Andreas. Thanks and so much for on watching. Your engagement. And, and congrats, <laughs> absolutely. Congratulations on the engagement. I had another um, person reach out to me the other day about their engagement, and he's wearing our jeans. I'm like, that's that's a, 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 such a special memory yeah. that you can bake into that pair of jeans. Now yeah. you'll remember it. And you didn't even wear your uh, Naked and Famous jeans in our. Um, our uh, wedding. It's we did not have an engagement. We didn't have an engagement. And, uh, yeah. I remember <laughs> a couple of days before the wedding, Reese had, had ordered her wedding dress, uh-huh. and uh, she, she had it made. But a couple of days before the wedding, we found this denim kimono right. that we, we, we bought. Yeah. Right, like, we were like, this is, un- this is amazing. And Risa didn't wear a kimono for her wedding, mm-hmm. but... And that wasn't, like, changing or something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, but I did wear wedding, that to my sister's wedding. Yeah. No, I think it's the only time you wore it. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and she had two weddings, so I yeah, only yeah. wore it to one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but uh, wearing a kimono yeah. is a very it's difficult a task. task. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but also, two weddings, same guy. Just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Sorry. <laughs> it's international marriage. So uh, one wedding, one country, another wedding in Japan. Yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> Um, not that there's no, no wrong nothing wrong with that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just clarifying it. Yeah. Um, uh, that that was the situation. But yeah, uh, denim kimono. I, where is that thing? It's here somewhere. Oh, it's in yeah, the closet. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, the, the next time you have it on, we'll uh, we'll take a photo. Yeah. We need a special a special Japanese occasion. Yeah. Um, we just need to hire somebody to to put it on me. So that's I, I can't put my own. So some yeah. people can, but I I, I can't. Yeah, so. it's it's a whole thing. Like someone's gonna come and like wrap you tight as hell and. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, unless it's done professionally, like well, again, some people can do it on their own if they're professionally yeah. trained. But like if I, because probably my my mom can put it on for me but i it would be a difference between like you know being like proper for two hours or being proper for 10 hours like the professional can make it so that you it's not gonna come off or like get loose or anything yeah. like that but if you just put it on as an amateur yeah it's, it's not gonna last it's unbelievable if you come to japan you can you can get this done yeah uh, like you can go to places like in, in yeah, osaka and like yeah, yeah. They have like a you know kimono studio. They yeah. rent you and they put it on for you and take some pictures. Yeah, it's a nice thing. I it's think it's fun. Nice. Yeah, it's like it, it's a it, great experience yeah. because it's it's very like you would you cannot imagine back in the days all women wore this all day yeah. every day. Yeah, it's insane. Every day, but still now like Japan's a modern society, but. You go around and you see women still wearing kimono. Yes. Obviously, they're going probably for something special, right? Right. So their but, daily yeah, yeah, wear, yeah. but yeah. But you still like in the midst of you know the the different kinds of fashion trends and the modernity of Tokyo. You walk around and you'll see these people wearing like these gorgeous you know kimonos. Yeah. And uh, it it does look quite nice. So uh, yeah, if you if you ever come to Japan, uh, consider uh, wearing a kimono for a while. They have that. They have that option. For you. <laughs> Men's uh, kimono is yeah. a lot easier. Yeah, yeah. Just so you know, women's. Yeah, as with almost everything. <laughs> I guess yeah. that dresses and <laughs> yeah. you know all that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, this is my daily driver kimono. BD writes. Yeah, that's it. Um, okay, BD. I was just telling someone your kimono story at work this week. Wild. Well, there you go. Oh. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, uh, racer guy 008. Does Japan still have royalty like the UK? Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's a uh, the emperor and his wife, and they have a daughter. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They sure. I'm sure they have more family than that. But this this um, uh, a few years ago was the first time that emperor didn't die. Oh yeah, he retired. Yeah, he chose to retire, and then so the the next generation became the 
Mew Emperor. Yeah, that's right. That guy is still around. Mm -hmm. I wonder what he's up to. Probably doing something nice. Probably reading books and yeah. sitting around. Yeah, he's probably enjoying his life. He was, yeah, I mean, he was there for, what, like 30 years or something mm -hmm. like that. The, the guy before was, like, 64 years of mm -hmm. reign, so a lot. All right. Not like uh, Elizabeth. Yeah, I mean, they're... Elizabeth. Yeah, they're less internationally known than the UK royal family, obviously. Yes, yeah. and they're not like they're not as public. I feel mm, right. Yeah, they're like the UK royal, but I think that goes with other. There's other royal families out in the world that yeah. we just don't know exist. But like you all, like you know, like the Princess of Monaco, or like you know, like people who no, are like more popular, <laughs> more like you know, in the eyes of like popular culture uh -huh. like there are people like that i don't think you know like going to like parties and galas and like events of the the you know high profile japanese um royal family don't attend those things unless uh -huh. it's like a you know like national a state like, event yeah yeah mm. uh yes yeah, sir uh, dogany right would you do a hanami jeans again maybe hanami times sky high and would you, uh, and if you do, would you make women's fits? Well, guess what? We are already doing it. The summer sky, so the, the uh, Sakura, Sakura sky. sky. So let's let's check this out one more time, just for you. We got the Sakura sky. So it's the light light blue, twelve ounce denim, summer color with the with the kind of rosy cherry blossom colors on the inside so yeah. there it you have it have that yeah. like cherry blossom jacquard salvage yeah but it is pretty much the yeah. sky high and yeah. uh hanami combined yeah so there you go and you, there's women's fits and oh yes and there's women's fits so uh, i didn't show that but but there is okay so with that said bd you nailed it right on the head snack time today we do have snack time let's get into it right now because we found something kind of neat at the uh at the old grocery store the other day another potato chip we like the potato chips so lately um i guess this is like a co collaboration but like calvi is the you know japanese potato chip maker but they they've been like selling a lot of like korean snacks in japan uh i guess they're popular mm -hmm. korean anything is popular korean anything is popular anyway, so this is the korean uh chips it's honey butter chips in maple flavored. Canadian maple. So it's very maple. confusing because it says honey butter chips. And this, this entire thing is a honey butter chip maple flavored. Yeah. And it has a um, Canadian maple, maple leaf. leaf. So I'm guessing that maple comes from. I, I, I like Canada. the amount. Like this is a Japanese product with Korean labeling mm -hmm. to make it look more Korean. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a Korean import product. No. Fully well, Japanese. Yeah, with yeah, you got the Korean, you got the Japanese, you got the English, you got the Canadian. It's uh Yeah. And they got the honey and yeah. the maple. Yeah. Like honey butter chip and maple flavor. Right. Honey butter is a great potato chip flavor that we don't get in the West. I there is no honey butter. Mm. It is it is amazing. It is amazing. I love honey butter chips. Okay. And uh alright, let's get in there. Hopefully I don't look like a these are really, uh, I just don't want to explode the bag. Yeah. Well, just open them regularly. There we go. Oh. You really smell the maple. Oh, very maple. -y. Wow. It's very maple-y, but I also smell the honey butter. I smell the butter. Like you know, what I have to, I appreciate the Japanese chip manufacturers because the chips are always really intact. Yeah, because they put so much air in They put in a there. lot of air in there. But I have to say, they, these are very intact That's true. Chips. Like, when you buy, like, Lay's or something, yeah. it's just all, like, yeah. at the bottom. There's just, just nothing like, right. fully shaped. Even at the bottom, they're, they're anyways. All right. Looks like Let's a, kind of looks like a Lay's. Mm. Hmm. I don't really taste the maple. I smell the maple way more than I taste it. And it's not... So, there's regular honey butter flavored potato chips. Mm. That one's more, like, salty. 
This one's a little more, more sweet. sweet. These are pretty good. I like these. I feel like maple scent is unnecessary. Hmm. I think I'm starting to taste the maple now. Maybe my, my first trip didn't have enough seasoning on it. Hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. It is good. Yeah. But I'm I can do without maple. I like the maple, because I'm required to by law. I think Justin Trudeau will put me in jail if I don't like maple syrup. Mm. I think that's it. Um tastes a little bit like um But even if uh it wasn't the threat of uh jailing, Canadian jailing to say that you don't like maple syrup. I do like maple syrup. And this tastes great. This I'm, is way sweeter than regular honey butter chip. This this is a seven four chip. I I want not only do I think it's a good quality chip, I want it and I would eat it again. Hmm. It's seven four. Huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. For me, that's what, a high rank. Mm-hmm. What has been the highest rank potato chip? <sighs> that that creamy dill pickle one. Mm. I forget what brand it was. That's in the eighth. Yeah. That one looks very good. All right. Well, in Canada, how much maple syrup do they eat compared to honey or sugar? Sugar is different because sugar is in everything. But I would say that maple syrup is consumed more than honey. Really? In Canada? Hmm. I would imagine so. I wonder. But the problem with maple syrup is that once you... Buy it, it just sits in the fridge for it, ca it can often sit in the fridge forever. Like, how often do you eat pancakes or waffles? And even then, I, I'm not often. a big fan of maple syrup, mm. so I don't use it so yeah. often. But it's just like, there's no other way to consume it. Yeah, Francisco Michael writes, I heard in Canada they drink maple syrup like in Super Troopers. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you have, if you can't get through a high school, uh, you basically are just chugging maple syrup every day at lunch with your pals. Um, but do you think that you actually consume more maple syrup by being in Canada? It, maybe. I, I feel like I do. So. We don't go, like, yeah. Chris Griffin, Buddy the Elf, says the four major food groups are sweets, <laughs> candy canes, candy corns, and syrup. I, I agree. Yeah. Um, make old fashions uh, with maple syrup instead of simple syrup or sugar. Ooh, that sounds good. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. We're, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. But yeah, maple syrup, big fan. And uh, I think you all should. This chip is a good chip. Good chip. Yeah. Chug a bottle of maple syrup this weekend with your friends. You know, diabetes be damned. Just enjoy that sweet, sweet nectar that comes from the great, or put it on the the great spaghetti. nation of Canada. Or put it on some spaghetti. Syrup and oatmeal. Uh, uh Francisco Michael writes to BD, how have you lived if you haven't mixed maple syrup and hot sauce and put it on a pizza? That does sound very good. See, like I would go for honey in that situation. Honey on pizza, yes. I'm going to try that maple syrup on pizza. I'm going to give it a shot. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right. Well, there you go, everybody. We're going to wrap it up there. We hope that you had a good time hanging out with us. We definitely had a great time hanging out with you. Uh, for those of you who got your mugs, enjoy them. I'm glad to, I'm glad that you did. I'm glad that we, we, we got to put them out. Glad we got to share our mug collection with you guys. We got to talk about Pokemon stuff. We had some maple chips. We talked about jeans. You name it. Great time. I can't wait to do it again with you guys. And we'll do it again with you guys next Friday right here on our YouTube channel, 7 p.m. Eastern, like always. Before you go, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Do something nice for yourselves if you haven't done so already. Do something nice for somebody else. So a lot of people bought mugs, so they already did something That's nice for true. themselves. So, so uh, thank you so much uh, for all your support with that. We've got some great new jeans coming out. Uh, well, jeans that came out today. We've got the, the hard and soft and the kimonos coming out next week. You'll learn more about this in the video coming up this week. And we're going to wrap it up. Yep. That's it. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. See you guys See you. next week.